for the first time in 31 years, a Floyd County school has knocked off the Prestonsburg Black Cat here in Prestonsburg tonight. The final, Floyd Central 49 and Prestonsburg 6. 32, the handoff, right side. Big run, 10, 5, Pylon, Pater. Looking to throw on first down, airing it out, Martin. And Cud at the 30, 20, break away for Brody Buck, touchdown Jaguars.
is Rocky Atkins of Proud Eastern Kentucky. When I met Ashley Tackett Lafferty, I knew right away that she shared a passion to fight for the bright future that Eastern Kentucky deserves. I watched as Ashley went the extra mile to open the doors of the Southeast State Correctional Complex and the jobs it will provide. And the local roads like 680 Connector and the expansion of the Mountain Parkway through Prestonsburg. Trust me when I say that Ashley Tackett Lafferty is the voice you need in Frankfurt. Ashley Tackett Lafferty from State Representative. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. Back at Pike County Central High School tonight on WMDJ Sports, Jamie Johnson along with Byron Hall tonight, Josh McKinney on statistics, and Matt Johnson on the camera tonight as we get you set for countdown to kickoff 22 minutes away here on WMDJ. It's Floyd Central visits Pike Central in district play. We do want to apologize for a, an error on the sound there at the very beginning. So for those who are watching on Facebook, uh, we do apologize for a sound issue, but I think we're good to go now on that end. Just to kind of recap, uh, for those just joining us, it is the sixth meeting between these schools. The Hawks have a 5-0 record, 5-0 all time versus Floyd Central. They have owned the Jaguars. They've had their number every year and it, they've kind of done it in the same manner each season running the football that's an issue that will be addressed tonight as well by the floyd central defense of course both of these teams though are struggling on the year they combine for a one and nine record overall when you put them together the one win was by pike central at the start of the season taking on pendleton county here at home this is their first home game since that night in august so they've been chopping at the bit to get home after Tough road losses on the road at Letcher Central, Clay County, and Harlan County. Of course, they also lost in the Pike County Bowl to Shelby Valley, 59-7. to For Floyd Central on the road after a tough loss again last week against their rival, Prestonsburg, 33-28. And Byron, we've kind of affectionately always called this game uh, from a Floyd Central perspective as the hangover game. Uh, it's, it's the hangover game. You play your rival. Whether you've won or lost the game, it's never transpired the next week against Pike Central. That's been kind of the issue when we played Pike Central in the past is the fact that they've come off that high of playing the rival. They can't seem to get it right back into gear in a game. It means more because it's for a playoff spot. Yeah, I mean, either it's they're emotionally too high or emotionally too low, it feels like, uh, coming into this game. But I feel like this might be the game that they're not going to have that hangover because of all this other circumstances around the team right now. And they're really fo trying to focus in and bear down for a win here. Yeah, I think the focus on getting that win and snapping an 18-game on the field losing streak, I think that takes away the hangover factor tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's just this is what you're focused on. It's week to week now uh, focusing on how do we get a win, how do we correct mistakes. Uh, and I really feel like they have put are prepping and trying to put in the work to correct some mistakes to get this on the field win. Floyd Central last week in that loss to Prestonsburg had their chances, just could not put it away. Uh, you could come it down to a few plays, maybe a series there in the end. You hit, you had the lead in the fourth quarter, something they hadn't had all year in their other games. Even though they were close, they were playing from behind. And the other night they had the lead for the most part throughout the evening, including there in the fourth quarter, even with five minutes to go, they have the lead in that ball game. You get a stop. It was what, the first stop all night yes. on defense. You get the first stop you've had all night. You get the ball back, and what happens? A three and out. Yeah. And on play calling, that was predictable. It was almost like they just got too tight uh, in the moment to try to finish the game off. And that goes back to what we were talking about Wednesday night, knowing how to win. Uh, you get so tight, you overthink it. I mean, maybe, well, the, I'm not, and, and I shouldn't question the play calling, right. maybe the execution thereof, because you got so tight of wanting to, hey, we got the lead, we got the ball, we got a chance to win, right. and it just did not come through. Well, uh, the thing that kind of sitting back now, we've had a week to kind of digest it, and I've looked at it more of, you know, they played a not to lose kind of style more than a not to, you know, than rather to try and win. Yes. And, you know, when you play not to lose, uh, everybody kind of gets tied. Everybody kind of get everything gets real predictable, and you're able. You're kind of on your heels instead of you know what we're playing to win here. 
you're kind of the aggressor. You're the aggressor. You're punching people in the mouth and moving the ball three, four yards at a time like you need to, running time off the clock, and they were just pushed back. This team comes out one of two ways tonight. Either they come out with that hunger to win, pick themselves up, and forget about what's happened over the first half of the season, or they let last week and the first half of the season mentally take them over, and they don't even come out with any kind of effort. It's going to be one or two ways here tonight. I hope it's the, 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 latter, the, form, the former rather than the latter. All right, right, I'm with you. I hope these guys are, are focused in. They are ready to come out and play and get a win here tonight. We'll come back and talk about Pike Central at 1-4 and four on the season in two minutes as our countdown to kickoff continues, presented by Howard Family Pharmacy on WMDJ Sports. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. Get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. and you'll find a huge selection in all styles and colors. There's 0% financing available for 48 months for qualified buyers. Patriot RV, US 23 in Prestonsburg. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Back at Pine County Central High School tonight, getting you set for kickoff 15 minutes away on WMDJ Sports. Talking about Pike Central tonight at 1-4 and four on the season. And when you talk about the Hawks, you got to start with Matt Anderson, the senior running back. Although he has missed the game, had maybe an injury issue earlier in the year. 64 carries for 600 yards, nine touchdowns, 150 yards per game on the average. He has scored 56 of the team's 74 points. It's easy to understand why he's an important factor tonight in a Floyd Central win to try to slow and shut him down. Yeah, I mean, the defense. Good has, luck. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've seen uh, Floyd Central struggle stopping him in the past, and that is going to be a key factor tonight is load the box, keep keep him in front of you, limit his gains, maybe three, four yards at a time. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a hard uh, task to slow him down, but if you can keep that yards per carry under five, then I think Floyd Central is going to have to be happy with that. Yeah, it's one of those situations where you literally could load the box up tonight. But he has so much first step speed, edge speed. Even though Floyd Central has gotten better at defending the edges this season against the run, the Jaguars have given up nearly 600 yards this year. Actually, 545 rushing yards, what they're listing. And I believe it's higher than that uh, from stats that we have kept this year. So I want to tell you about 600 yards they have allowed this year just on the ground. It is still a, a point of necessity that has to be worked on. And tonight could be tough because Anderson, one of the best running backs in, in this district and maybe east of Lexington. Yeah, I mean, he is, and he's been this way since a fre since he was a freshman and we've seen him uh, playing 
and he is, he's, like you said, a great first step. He's got great instincts uh, to find the hole, waiting, waiting for holes to develop, and just the shiftiness that he has about him. You know, last week the Jaguars allowed over 200 yards to Prestonsburg's Ethan Jarvis. Art Jarvis, hard runner. Anderson, probably more athletic and faster. Uh, it really will come down to line play. And you noticed something interesting about Pike Central. A lot of these guys on the roster are listed at 5'9", 5'9 and a half, 5'10". There's only one player listed at two players. Two players listed at six feet even. They're got to be bigger than that. That's a lie. <laughs> that's Not a, so we, fast, my friend. That's what we call a lie uh, at home. Uh, be, maybe they consider that a white lie. <laughs> well, a white lie. Uh, we saw some guys on that line uh, from our eyeballs up here that are definitely over six feet tall. And that's going to be uh, interesting tonight. Uh, the line is something to t- take, in, take in consideration here. Floyd Central hasn't been pushed around a whole lot. Uh, this year on the line in other games, not a whole lot uh, this season. But uh, last week they were outworked by uh, Prestonsburg's line. Uh, just good techniques uh, that were played by Prestonsburg's line. So uh, always an issue. It's always something to look at, how the line play will, will be in a game. Definitely will be a factor here tonight because we expect a lot of running in this game tonight. Their quarterback for Pike Central, uh, Damon Scammell, has attempted 31 passes. He's completed nine of those for 35 yards. They're going to be running the ball for the majority of the night. Well, even, you know, just looking out here, watching Pike Central warm up, you've seen Scammell out here, and they've got a couple designed runs for him, uh, quarterback draws, uh, just like a sweep for himself, uh, almost like he's running the Wildcat with a power, with a power, a power attack almost. We'll see what happens in a few moments. It is homecoming night tonight for Pike Central and Floyd Central as we are counting you down to kickoff. Now about 11 minutes away as we continue on. We'll have our Friday night football flashback. Josh has got that. We'll have Josh back up with that segment. A little history between Pike Central and Beaver Creek teams. Before this school was in existence, this matchup didn't happen very often. So we'll talk about that in that segment coming up next in two minutes on WMDJ Sports. Are you tired of buffering and long load times when watching streaming videos? Gearheart Broadband provides the speed you need to make that a thing of the past. With speeds up to one gig, you can have the bandwidth to stream, game, surf, and shop on multiple devices without slowing down. Find out more or get started today at imctv.com or give us a call at 606-478-9406. Remember, better broadband means better lives. In the race for District Judge, experience matters. Tyler Green has served more than 11 years as an assistant county attorney, practicing law nearly every day in Floyd District Court. Tyler Green is a lifelong Floyd County resident, committed to keeping our community safe. Tyler Green is experienced in all areas of law that come before a district judge and will be ready to serve on day one. Elect experience. Elect Tyler Green as your next Floyd District Judge. Take over the county to elect Tyler Green. When you need to know about your medications, it's important to know your pharmacists. Chris Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, Shana Newsom, and Terry Cancel at Howard Family Pharmacy, your community health mark pharmacy, will always take time for you. And it's more convenient now than ever to fill your prescriptions. Simply use their free mobile app or log on to howardfamilypharmacy.com. Quality care and service, where it's always about family. That's Howard Family Pharmacy of Allen and Eastern. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Grammy Award winner and Country Music Hall of Fame member Marty Stewart is coming to Prestonsburg. It's Marty Stewart and his fabulous superlatives Saturday, October 15th at 7:30. You Tickets start at only $31. Call 188-MacArts or MacArts.com. Marty Stewart, Prestonsburg, October 15th. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. Welcome back to the Howard Family Pharmacy pregame show where we are getting you set for district action between the Floyd Central Jaguars and Pike County Central Hawks. It is now time for this week's Floyd County football flashback. 
Friday, August 27th, 2004. Before Pike County Central welcomed in Floyd Central to Class 3A District 6 in 2017, the Hawks had only played one game in its history against a team from Beaver Creek, and that was South Floyd in 2004. Both the Hawks and Raiders entered the Week 2 game coming off victories in their season opener, but South Floyd's defense was no match for Pike County Central running back Gordon Varney as the Hawks downed the Raiders 44-20 in the Shorty Jamerson Classic. Varney rushed for more than 200 yards and six touchdowns in the win and had the Hawks on top by double digits midway through the first quarter. South Floyd was led on the ground by Kyle Hall, who totaled 54 yards and one touchdown on seven carries. Joe Osborne rushed for 46 yards, scoring one two-point conversion, and Wes Hall finished with 35 yards on the ground. Quarterback Anthony Thornsberry was a bright spot for Donnie Daniels' offense, completing five of 16 pass attempts for 91 yards, completing one of his passes to T.J. Hall for a touchdown. The Raiders did not allow the loss to have any sort of negative effect on the rest of the season, as they would only lose one more regular season contest, a 40-16 decision at Pikeville. South Floyd finished 8-3 in 2004, losing at home in the first round of the playoffs to Lynn Camp, 35-30. The Howard Family Pharmacy pregame show continues right after this. I'm Brandy Bradley. My mommy taught me to do the right thing even when it's hard. As Floyd District Judge, addicts are not going to get a slap on the wrist. If you get busted with dope, you've got a problem, and you're either going to sit in jail or get help. Real recovery takes time. You can't walk 40 miles into the wilderness and walk five miles and get out. As a public defender, I have seen every trick in the book. I'm not just on the ballot. I'm on a mission to make a difference, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. If you're as fed up with dope in Floyd County as I am, show up on November 8th and vote Brandy Bradley for Floyd District Judge. Hey, Floyd, by Brandis Bradley. Want to know the secret to a healthy smile? You won't find it in a bottle. The secret is found in simple, everyday brushing, crossing, and regular checkups with Martin Dentistry. Recently voted as the best dentist in Floyd County, Dr. Stacy Martin offers preventative general dentistry treatments and checkups to patients of all ages. Martin Dentistry would like to thank their patients for their trust and they look forward to serving you for years to come. Call for an appointment, 285-9444. For Martin Dentistry. Hi everybody, Dave Baker here for Total Pharmacy Care. And football, the object on Friday nights is to prove your team is better than their team. Well, the Total Pharmacy Care, we prove that. Let's prove that. Our team of pharmacists only fills prescriptions, no cards, and candy, or novelty items. Just completely focus on explaining and filling your prescriptions. So tell your doctor to choose between Total Pharmacy Care. We're located in the Bell, Melbourne, Pikeville, Prestonsburg, and Martin. It's not just a name, it's a pharmacy. This is Senator Court Clerk, Douglas Ray Hall, with my message to all student athletes in Floyd County. It's been said that others may have more talent than you, but remember, there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. Remember that every champion was once only a contender. Be confident, take risks, and know that failure and rejection are the first steps to success. Good luck to all Floyd County schools from your Circuit Court Clerk, Douglas Ray Hall. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. Back at Pike County Central tonight as we are getting set for kickoff just a few more minutes away as the colors are leaving the field in the presentation here tonight on WMDJ Sports. A fine rendition of the national anthem played moments ago, actually sung moments ago by a student here uh, at, at know, uh, Pike County Central. So, a cappella. A cappella even. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic effort yes. here tonight. We're getting set for the coin flip tonight. We'll have that for you here on WMDJ Sports. Again, keys to a win tonight. Uh, Byron, I got three written down. We've already talked about stopping Anderson or at least trying to slow him down tonight. Uh, red zone scoring drives. You can get in the red zone, you get that opportunity, take advantage of it, and utilize it tonight. Also, time of possession is a big part of this offense. That has to happen tonight, too. It will also allow uh, a chance to try to slow down 
the uh, Pike Central ground attack with the uh, owning the time of possession statistic, which is something they failed to do last week. Well, you know, they have, for the most part, owned time of possession and even, or, you know, mentioned last week, I don't think there was a big discrepancy in it either way with time of possession. But tonight, who knows? I mean, it could be two, three plays, and boom, somebody scores here tonight. So time of possession might go out the window. Yeah, it wasn't anything that was a factor in the, in the previous matchups. As we told you, the average score of the previous games, 45-31, all in favor of Pike County Central. But uh, in all fairness, the Pike Central teams we've seen in the past had more than just one scoring threat. Uh, they've had threats through the air. They've had uh, two or three guys that can break off a run or two. I've seen a lot of big plays when these teams yeah. get together in the past. And that probably be something else, too, to work on is containing the big play because Anderson is well capable of doing that tonight for the Hawks. As Floyd Central has won the toss, they will defer to the second half. So we will see Pike Central on offense first tonight. When we come back in two minutes, that wraps up our cut down the kickoff tonight. Brought your way by Howard Family Pharmacy. Hawks on offense first. Back in two minutes for the start on WMDJ Sports. You want the values, you want the painting. On the selection that you're looking at for, we got the service. We see the better. Come on and see us and you'll pay much more. Patriot Army of Prestonsburg is your RV headquarters and more. In fact, we are authorized dealer for Club Car Golf Carts, Club Car is America's premier line of golf carts, and you'll find a huge selection in all styles and colors. There's zero percent financing available for 48 months for qualified buyers. Patriot RV, US 23 in Prestonsburg. When it comes to keeping your home cool this summer, don't sweat it. Right now, Elliott Heating and Cooling is offering six months, zero interest, with no monthly payments, same as cash. Offer good now through the end of summer. One call and your worries are gone. 437-7368. A name you can always paddle on. Hello, this is Brandon Spencer, Republican candidate for state representative of the 95th District, Floyd and Pike County. Can you imagine one football player trying to win a game by themselves? They would never get anything done. You must have a team working together. That's why I'm asking for your vote on November the 8th. I can work with Senator Rand Paul and Congressman Hal Rogers in the Republican-controlled House and Senate. With your vote, you'll have a team working for Floyd and Pike County. Paid for by Brandon Spencer. Hi, Kenny Rice here for A-Plus Roofing and Exteriors. Are you needing to improve your home or business exterior? Let the pros at A-Plus Roofing and Exteriors help. They specialize in roof replacement and will work with your insurance when it comes to wind or hail damage. A-Plus Roofing can also replace or repair gutters and siding. They have over a decade of experience to handle your job correctly and efficiently. Contact Travis Francis for a free estimate at 606-791-4226 or visit A-Plus Roofing K. KY.com. That's A-plus roofing and exteriors of Hazard and Lexington. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Back at Pine County Central High School as we get set for kickoff tonight. Jack Myers and Hawks on WMDJ Sports. B.J. Peterson will be putting toe to leather here in just a moment. We appreciate you watching tonight on our WMDJ Facebook page and listening, of course, on the radio, toe to leather, and here we go. And stop the play. We have whistles on the kickoff. Would that be an offsides, maybe? I don't see no flags. No, there's no laundry on the field, but whistles were pretty adamant as the kick was happening. Apparently, we're going to re-kick. Maybe an official out of place. Maybe not ready. I don't know. No penalty. So we will re-kick again and tell you that tonight's game is presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. And here we go. Better kick by Peterson. It'll bounce and go out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So the Hawks will take over here on their first set tonight. Natural surface tonight, natural grass, no uh, rubber turf tonight. Is that a different issue as always? I I don't think so. It's a dry night. It's 
maybe a little bit harder on the ground when you hit. Yeah, no, uh, no mud anywhere. No Warren areas too bad. Turf wise, just a good old fashioned football game, the old school way here tonight. Uni Watch, Pike Central in the blue, tops and bottoms, orange and white trim, Hawks across the top. I like the script writing of the Hawks on the helmet. I'm giving it an A. I like it. I'll give it an A as well. Shotgun snap on first down, going to Anderson, takes it to the side, right side, and not a lot of running room there as he goes out of bounds. I think he lost, man. I think he lost two on that. Second down for the Hawks. Looks like a one yard loss on that for Anderson as the uh, fence collapsed, trying to hit that outside that time. Second down and 11, ball at the 34-yard line. Well, they get on the 33 personally. Waiting for snap by the uh, quarterback. Scamble looks back over to the sideline to Coach Barney to uh, get the correct call. And there's the snap, and the handoff will go to Anderson again, this time to the left, and does turn the corner and will take it across the 40 and go down. About a six-yard pickup that time for Anderson in a much more manageable third down situation coming up. A third and five now. Ball at the 40. We're just underway tonight. Scoreless game on the Hutch Ford. Dot com scoreboard. Pike Central taking their time here. Pike Central might want to play the time of possession game. In the past, they've been kind of a hurry-up team at different times, not so much this year. Got two men both ways in the spread. Look, keeper for Scamble runs for the first down and still on his feet in the Floyd Central territory and goes out of bounds across the 40. At the 39-yard line, big pickup by Scammell, and the Hawks are in business here on the third play of the game. A 21-yard run by Scammell. That is what you did not want to happen if you were Floyd Central, as they've got good yardage. Pike Central's got good yardage now going twice to that left side. First and 10, ball at the Floyd Central 39. Again in the spread formation, a keeper. And going out to the right, quarterback this time, not going anywhere, taken down by Landing Castle, the senior linebacker for Floyd Central, and a loss on the play, a loss of three. Good job by Castle there to fight through the block and possibly even a hold uh, to make that tackle. Second down and 13 coming up for the Hawks here. Still in Floyd Central Territory at the 42. First drive tonight by the Hawks. This is back-to-back -back, uh, times that they have lost yardage on first down running to this right side. Play clock at two. They do get the snap off. Quick throw, and it's almost picked off. Oh, my. Peterson nearly had a pick right there, broke it up. To make it more impressive, it's going to be a one-handed pick. Yes. But I think that's what you want to see from Floyd Central is force Pike Central into passing situations where they have struggled at this year. Only nine completed passes now out of 32 attempts by Scammell through the air. It is now third and 13 from the Floyd Central 42. Good situation for the Jags here. Shotgun snap. They'll give it to Anderson to chew it up. And he's found a hole. Right side weaving goes out of bounds, but I think he's shy of the stick. No, he has passed the stick easily. First down. My, my apology there. As he has the first down. Looks like a pickup of about what? 15. 15. Yeah. 15. Brings up another Mountain Family Madison first down. So Matt Anderson first down by the Hawks, and the drive continues. First and 10, ball at the 28. Ike Central just outside the red zone in their first drive tonight, and now a timeout has been called by the Hawks. 
to discuss the situation here. A timeout brought your way by Parkview Pharmacy at Mini, where Valerie Akers and Christy Moore will help you out and take care of your prescriptions. Take time out for your health. And visit Parkview Pharmacy on Monday. Right here, I'm kind of kind of expecting, you know, what we expected, a lot, heavy dose of Anderson, a heavy dose of the run. A uh, little surprised early on with the pass. I uh, thought they might uh, try to soften up the defense before really trying to hit the air. Well, they know that the defense is going to key on Anderson a lot tonight, so they got to make other things happen. Uh, I like the play call for Scammell calling his own number and going out. Uh, Josh, what have you been seeing so far? Like Byron said, a heavy dose of the run. I think that uh, Pike Central wants to utilize the athleticism and speed of Scammell along with Anderson. Like you said, Floyd Central is going to be king on Anderson. Maybe Scammell can kind of catch him off guard a little bit from the keeper position. First and 10 for the Hawks at the Floyd Central 28 in a scoreless game. 9.42 to play first quarter. There's the snap. Keeper for Scammell again. Went up the gut. Not a lot there. Looks like three yards on the pickup that time for Scammell. And you'll take that yeah. if you're the defense. That, that's the kind of gains you want to give up is two, three yards and possibly hit them in the backfield and make them go to the air. Second down and seven now. Ball at the 25-yard line. Got the Hawks in the pro set. Got three men out. And now it looks like a shift over and a direct snap to Anderson. Takes the ball, left side running, finds the gap, and takes it for a first down into the red zone down near the 10-yard line. Looks like to the 11, and the Hawks are in business right now. It's like 14 yards on that pickup by Anderson. That time, Pike Central made the quick adjustment to go with the shift over, giving that direct snap to Anderson and Scammell getting the blocks out front. Good play call by the Hawks. First and 10, ball at the 11. Go, That'll shift back to the quarterback, actually the other side with Anderson, another direct snap. Running to the right side, hits the corner and can't turn it though as he's pushed out of bounds. Nice defense there by Adams and Coach Shelton there. Kind of shut down that uh, right side. Got a loss of one on the play. I thought they were giving a loss of two, looks like. Move the ball back to the 13-yard line. Loss of two. Here, even after all that, they still couldn't pull Anderson down. Ball around the 13, but, hey, they forced him out of bounds. We'll take it. Second down and 12 coming up. There's that shift again. And another direct snap. And with it is Anderson, this time hit and down, does get some positive yards to the nine-yard line. And our angle isn't the best here. It, we, I will say this, love the press box uh, remodel. Yeah. We can see better than in the past, but uh, it's still a tough field to see because of the height that we don't have. A four-yard pickup by Anderson. Looks like the ball sitting on the nine-yard line now. We appreciate the accommodations tonight by Pike Central and allowing us to stream this game for their fans as much as our fans tonight. Third down and around eight coming up. Another direct snap, and they hand it back off, but the defense was there, and the ball popped loose, but he was already down as that one went to Lane Adams. Like, yeah, Lane Adams, number 10. As the snap Very went to Adams. Anderson, he laddered it to Adams. But the defense was there, and they had seen that one. Got about a two-yard pickup on that. I'll go with that. I can't argue that one. Now it's a fourth down situation. Talking like fourth and six here. I mean, this is. You can get a first down. It's not. you are still got a yard to play with to get a first set of downs or get the touchdown here. This is a questionable passing situation. Play clock ran out. Yes, it did. That's a delay of game. Unless they took the timeout. Let's wait. Timeout taken by the Hawks. No. Floyd Central took the timeout. Wow. They signaled Floyd Central. Is that right? Well, it was at zero. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah, game clock was still rolling. We got to fix that. 7.04. Probably around seven minutes. Yeah. So we'll get some adjustments made. <laughs> Look here, I think okay. if Floyd Central took this time out, they bailed, they just bailed, just bailed Pine them Central out. out. That was a delayed game all the way. Yeah, the, the officials signaled Floyd Central timeout. And nevertheless, we have it. And they're going to eight minutes on the clock. All right, seven. Seven, okay. Seven minutes. There we go. And they're telling them to wait. They're going to get the correct time. 6.36 is what uh, Christian Cottle was asking for. Yeah, that's worse than what it was. <laughs> that's worse than what it was. That's okay. All right. Seven would have been right. <laughs> Oh, well. What do we know? I know this. It's fourth and six. And we're going to find out whether or not Pike Central has done all this work for nothing or will they punch it in for six here. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to another direct snap to Anderson here with Scammell as his lead blocker. Yeah, open up a hole. Scammell is at shotgun, but watch for that shift that they're doing in the backfield. And direct snap goes to Anderson. He's going to throw a lopped up pass for some reason. And it's knocked away. Wow. Well, the Tebow jump pass there. Didn't see that coming. But we'll take that. So a turnover on downs to the Jaguars. You got to question that call. I mean, I'm sorry. You got to question that. An empty possession for Pike Central, 12 plays, 69 yards, 524. And that, those are kind of drives that may come back costly in a game like this. Down inside the 10, uh, that you, have, you want yeah. to punch it in when you get down that far. So now we'll see the Floyd Central offense. Pike Central is doing a lot of shifting here on the defensive side of the ball and quickly a throw caught by Jace Martin across the 10. Boy, a quick out route. Ran from brother to brother. That's about a five-yard pickup. I like that call. Brings up second down for the Jaguars. Jace has got a lot of speed. He has not had a lot of opportunities. That's only Jace's sixth catch of the season. Second down and five. Ball roughly around the 12-yard line here. Martin from shotgun takes it, hands it off, and a big hole up the middle. That's Colt Shelton on the carry. He'll get a first down for the Jags down into the 19-yard line, a seven-yard pickup by Colt Shelton. Down to the 19, I believe. There's Shelton. It was Shelton. You see Shelton? Josh sees Peterson. I thought it was Peterson uh, off the get-go, but I was. Go, we'll go Peterson. I couldn't see the. Uh, it's tough to see. We'll, that's why we have three sets of eyes up here. So we'll go Peterson on the seven-yard pickup. Empty backfield this time as they go to the spread. Martin from shotgun on first down. Jet sweep. This will be Shelton to the right side. Turns the corner. Takes it for another first down across the 30 and down. Inside the 35-yard line, huge pickup by Coach Shelton and the Jaguars. Looks like a gain of 16 up to the 35-yard line there. Wow, this is nice to see. Who needs time of possession when you can march the ball downfield? Clock's at 514. First and 10, ball at the 35, their own 35 for Floyd Central. Scoreless game here in the first quarter, Hutchford.com scoreboard. Are you going to go to a single back option here with, Better Pe hurry. with Peterson in the backfield? Two seconds on the play clock. It went to zero. No flag. Martin in the backfield just has to eat it. That's a loss. So we're going to give a loss of one, I believe. Oh, yes. Loss of one on the play for Max Martin. That's a long one. <laughs> Get some personnel changes here. You got Jason Shelton checking out. 
Castle and Castle coming in along Jacob Johnson. Definitely going to a run set here. Peterson in the backfield. Max Martin from shotgun, and it will be Peterson with the football. Left side finds the hole, big gap, breaks it across the 45 and down to around the 48-yard line. I love seeing B.J. Peterson with nobody in his face take that ball and just use what God gave him, his athletic ability. 14. 14. We've talked about it all year that he is your most athletic player. He needs to have as many touches as possible on offense. Love that call. You think they've saved it for district play, not to give anybody a look at it till now. This time lines up just off to the right in the straight eye formation, and a handoff will go to Adams this time, and not much there. Maybe one. Maybe none. No gain. Brings up second down for the Jaguars. So now second and 10, ball at midfield, 326 to play. First quarter scoreless game here tonight, Pike Central and Floyd Central District football with fall in the air up here. It feels like football tonight, Byron. It feels like football. It tastes like football. It looks like football. Hey. We got the natural surface out yes. here. I like it. If you're somewhere other than here tonight watching this game, Go outside and get the same effect. Go out on the porch and watch it or listen to it. And a little misdirection, but confusion. Martin just keeps it and makes something out of nothing there. Gets it down into Pike Central Territory to the 46-yard line. Nice play by the senior there to really just create his own opportunity. About a six-yard pickup. Seven yards. Seven. That really looked like a busted play, really. It was. It was definitely a busted play. Uh, Martin with the heads-up play is just go forward and get what you can. Good push by the line there. Now in the flex bone look, and the handoff goes to Adams, turns the corner on the left and goes out of bounds, but has the first down for the Jaguars. Carry by Blake Adams. Blake Adams on the Go carry the for eight the yards. It's Blake's... Give me, give me a second, tonight. I'll give you a, yeah, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Moving deeper into Pike Central Territory, ball at the 38. Ball at the 38. Of the Hawks, still a scoreless game. Two minutes to go, first quarter, Hutchford.com scoreboard. Martin this time again under center, they'll stay in that flex bone formation. And in motion is Adams. They give it to Sheston Johnson up the middle. He's going to chew it up. Big gain on the play. About a nine-yard pickup by Johnson. Nine, close to ten, maybe even challenging that first down. Inside the 30. Johnson. Now it's around the 28. Second down for the Jaguars. Nine on that carry. Everyone getting a chance at it here. Sheston Johnson. Adams, Coach Shelton, Martin Peterson. and Peterson, all with touches in this series for the Jags. And they threw it to Mart Jace Martin as well. Shotgun for Martin, handoff Peterson again, takes it through the gap on the right side, gets a couple out of it. Move it forward three yards. I'm looking at it right. Clock will start now under a minute. It will be now. They'll call it first down. It was. He yeah. got the first down. First and 10 from the 26. Yep. Well, the Jags pounding it downfield right now. First and 10 of the 26. Man in motion is Peterson. And they hand it off to him on the sweep to the right. Cuts it up, first down and more, breaks free across the 10 and down inside the five-yard line. B.J. Peterson sets up first and goal for Floyd Central here. Looks like first and goal from the one. Wow. That's, Just that, missed the doorstep. If that's, that's a 25-yard gain yeah. if he's not the one. He's at the one. 
Ah, right at the doorstep. Big run by Peterson there. Glad to seen him just fall on, fall that extra three feet. <laughs> 25 yards on the run. Jags are looking to score first here tonight. First and goal. Martin will go under center. They'll turn and give, and they'll get the line push. There's a flag down, though. That's usually a hold. A flag against Floyd Central. Coach Hager pretty upset by the call. Illegal motion, on Illegal motion is the call against Floyd Central. It's a five-yard five penalty. Looks to be. So now first and they'll repeat the down. First and goal from the six. Yes, sir. Clock at 13 seconds. Under center with the uh, three backs behind. Handoff will go, and this time the Hawks were ready. It was Coach Shelton on the carry that time. Got nothing. Going the wrong direction. And the clock expires on the first quarter. It will be second Ladies and, and about 10 when we come back. Second and goal from the 10. We'll come back with the second quarter start in one minute in a scoreless game between the Hawks and Jack Myers on WMDJ Sports. This is Earl Jeffries of Hutchford and Paintsville and West Liberty. We here at Hutchford are committed to the area students, athletes, and their growth and dedication to teamwork and excellence on and off the field. It is our hope that each team will have an excellent season and make memories that last a lifetime. Every team knows to win the big game, you have to want it more than the other team. At Hutchford, our team wants to sell you your next vehicle more than anyone else, and we can prove it. Shop us online at Hutchford and Paintsville and West Liberty. Appalachian Wireless is the region's premier wireless provider. And now we're hiring. Our team offers an excellent benefits package with competitive wages and a great work environment. Apply today to join the home team and a company that's been in business for 30 years and is dedicated to Eastern Kentucky. To apply or for more information on job openings, visit AppalachianWireless.com and click the careers link at the bottom of the page. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Appalachian Wireless is an equal opportunity employee. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. Second quarter coverage presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. J.B. Johnson, Byron Hall, Josh McKinney, and Matt Johnson tonight as it is second down and goal. From the 11. 11-yard 11 line. After being first and goal from the one. one. First play, penalty. Second play, driven backwards. Blew up in the backfield. Let's see what happens here on this next opportunity What is still second down. Personally, I'd almost like to see that quick out back to maybe Buck or Martin on the outside. Peterson, the lone man in the backfield. Go hound that in a two tight end set here. And keeper, oh, that's, that wasn't designed for that. Martin takes it to the outside and goes out of bounds. Again, don't think that's what they had cooking. No. That wasn't the ingredients for what Coach Hager wanted. They're going in the wrong direction quickly. Another loss. I mean, this is third and, I mean. About third and 12. Something about that. I thought well, maybe no gain on it. Maybe still at the 11. Yeah, they actually no gain on the play. But, I mean, this is still a predictable passing down now almost. Anderson, or B, yeah, Peterson behind Martin. He keeps it, rolls out, throws for the corner, and it's incomplete. Looking for Brody Buck. That is incomplete, brings up fourth down. Running to the stick. And now it's fourth down and goal from the 11. I like the call. Mm -hmm. Pike Central loaded the box right there, was bringing the house. Nice, nice play design to roll Martin out and give him a nice throwing lane. Uh, Buck just couldn't finish it. 
Now you're back to that far left hash and lining back up. Look here, I'd almost let Peterson kick a field goal. Fourth and goal at the 11. Peterson in the backfield. Keeper for Martin rolling out to the right. He's going to throw, does, and it's incomplete. Turnover on downs. And back to Pike Central, and we stay scoreless. 11.04 to go here in this second quarter. Hutchford.com scoreboard. 6.19 on the time of possession. 15 plays, 83 yards, and nothing. Mm -mm -mm. Once again, coming back to learning how to win. Well, one of the keys was red zone scoring possession, scoring plays. Red zone possessions. Defense got to turn around right here and get a huge stop. Wait a minute. Roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. Wow. Didn't even see the flag. Well, we're caught by a petition. So another chance at it. A new life and a gift. And can they get in? Waiting for it. They yep. do the, the for a touchdown. Got... So <laughs> what looked to be a stunner with the incomplete pass turns into a roughing the passer call. And Floyd Zucker gets an extra play out of it. So six tries at it, and they do punch it in for six. That's one way to get it. Hey. He gave you a gift. Take advantage of it. Looking for the two-point conversion. The handoff will go. This is Peterson with it and takes it in for two. So Floyd Central leads eight to six on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Back with the kickoff in one minute on WMDJ Sports. Friends, this is Rocky Adkins of Proud Eastern Kentucky. When I met Ashley Tackett Lafferty, I knew right away that she shared a passion to fight for the bright future that Eastern Kentucky deserves. I watched as Ashley went the extra mile to open the doors of the Southeast State Correctional Complex and the jobs it will provide. And the local roads like 680 Connector and the expansion of the Mountain Parkway through Prestonsburg. Trust me when I say that Ashley Tackett Lafferty is the voice you need in Frankfurt. Hey, Joe, why? Ashley Tackett Lafferty, their state representative. Hi, everybody. Dave Baker here for Citizens Bank of Kentucky. Do you want to love your car even more? How about putting extra cash in your pocket each month by refinancing with new low rates at CBK? It is fast. It's easy. All you have to do is log on to wearecitizens.bank. Hi, everybody. Dave Baker here for Citizens Bank of Kentucky. You know that old saying, the time is money? Well, it's true. How about putting extra cash in your pocket each month by refinancing with new low rates at CBK? All you have to do is log on to wearecitizens.bank. Loans are subject to credit approval and equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Ready for the kick after the touchdown by Floyd Central. Peterson booms it away. And it's back behind the 20-yard line. Fielded up to the 30. 35 across the 40 and taken down. Nice return by the Hawks. Malachi Duramus. Alex Castro schemes with the big tackle uh, to save what could have been a return as he was a one-on-one -on -one and stopped him dead in his tracks at the 41. 10.30 and ticking second quarter, Hutchford.com scoreboard. Floyd Central on top, 8-0 after B.J. Peterson was able to take that touchdown run in on the sixth try from the goal. Punches it in after a roughing the passer penalty that came in late. Pike Central on the attack, a direct snap to Scamble. The whole team went right. He goes left, had no help, and it's a loss on the play. In there on it, Jacob BJ Johnson. P no, it's B.J. Peterson and Sheston Johnson. Sheston Johnson. Nice job by the defense there. Loss of one. One on the play. And a half. Second down and 11, ball at the 40, their own 40-yard line for Pike Central. 
Shotgun and the handoff to Anderson up the middle and down, contained. Nice solo tackle there by Floyd Central. That was Will Wells on the tackle for the Jags. So a four-yard gain there, moving the ball up to the 44-yard line. Excuse me, Bryce Thacker on that takedown. Fifty-two. I don't went with Will Wells too. He's over here on this. I, I thought side. it was. I thought it was him. I thought it was seventy-two. And the snap handoff to Anderson right side got a lot of running room there. Blows it down, and he's gone. Touchdown, Anderson. Took it loose, went to the right, scampers downfield. 56 yards on the carry. Untouched to the very end. And a Gearheart Broadband touchdown. Better broadband means better lives. Gearheart Broadband to check out Gearheart TV with over 200 streaming channels. Three plays. And already 96 yards. On the ground by Anderson. That 56 yarder helps things. A little bit. <laughs> That's not what you wanted to give up right immediately after scoring a touchdown. And the Hawks will go for two. And looking, it's going to be Anderson getting up the middle and in there for the two point conversion. We're tied at eight, 8.35 to go. Second quarter, Hutchford.com scoreboard. Back in one minute on WMDJ Sports. Remote work and learning require a dependable internet connection. Gearheart Broadband understands how important staying connected is and wants to provide you with dependable high-speed internet with speeds up to one gig. It's perfect for homes with multiple users and numerous devices and now has Wi-Fi 6 available. Find out more today at imctv.com or give us a call at 606-478-9406. Remember, better broadband means better lives. Parkview Pharmacy at Minnie takes pride in being committed to the community. Pharmacist Valerie Akers and Christy Moore understand your time is valuable, which is why Parkview Pharmacy offers free delivery service for your prescriptions. The next time you stop in, ask about online refills for faster service and pick up one of those wonderful Candleberry candles. Parkview Pharmacy at Minnie, 377-2117. Committed to our community. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Ready for the kickoff here by the Hawks. Tied at eight on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Kick is a line drive, touched by one of the front line men and downed alertly by Floyd Central, Sheston, Sheston Johnson. Johnson, taking that down. So first and 10, Jaguars around the... Around the 35, 34, 34, like. yep. Well, the white hat was at the 35. Now he'll say 34. Okay. I was looking, trying to look at the stick and the yeah. side judge on the far side. Tied at eights with 8.31 to go here in the second quarter. Three plays and boom for the Hawks on that last drive. Under center, back to pass. Martin throws, caught by Buck, and wrapped up and taken down by Kinson Childers. But about a four-yard gain by Buck on the pass from Martin. Hey, you like to see it, though, quick. Get it out quick. Yes. Uh, almost an extension of the run game right there with those quick, short passes. Well, had that solo coverage, and Buck's got some inches on his defender. That's a good look uh, by the offense there to expose that. Second down and six. Ball near the 40, and they fake the first man. Now they go up the middle, and the defense of the line can't hold it, and it's a loss on the play, it looks like, or maybe no gain. They'll say no gain on the play, put the ball back. And the 38. So third down coming up. Defense, 
So after the quick hitter on the pass, the run goes nowhere. Third down now. Peterson in the backfield, high snap. They hand it to him. He's met and down. Loss on the play behind the 35. I think they're going to mark him at the 35. They do. Loss of three, so that'll be a putting situation there. Always got to be wary, though. Peterson is the punter, and we have seen him with that rugby-style kick a few times roll out and gain a first down. 6.42 and ticking here in the second quarter, a tied game at 8-8. And, whoa. Got some flags and some movement on the blue side. Looks to be. Offsides on. Pike Central, and they reset the clock to 634, as you said that. It's been rough one up here. So now that changes the play call, maybe. I don't know. They're going to stay with the punt. Nobody back to return for Pike Central either. Peterson rolling out rugby style, now lets it go. Nice kick and bounces. Takes a Floyd Central roll. Down to the 29-yard line. So a good punt by Peterson. And the Hawks take over 6-16 to go third quarter at their own 29-yard line in an 8-8 game. You can see Peterson had run on his mind, but made the good decision, I believe, as Pike Central had nobody back in coverage to return and had all 11 guys up on the line. Yeah, I think the right decision made as well. Now, that last drive scares you when you get up that big play from Anderson and got to try to contain the big play. And watch for those direct snaps. Shotgun for Scamble this time, hands it to Anderson, cuts it and goes down. That time Thacker did stop him for no gain on the play. Already 96 yards on about nine carries. Waiting here. And they'll do the shift. Anderson will take the direct snap possibly. Yes, sir, does. And he'll take it to the right side. Looking for a blocker. Gets it, turns the corner, and goes out of bounds near the stick. We'll see where. I think he's going to be about three yards short. By stick man got out of the way. Don't blame him. I don't blame him. That train down. coming through, I don't blame him either. Yeah. Give him about a gain of eight. Eight-yard pickup by Anderson, so a third down and two is coming up. One hundred and four yards now for Anderson on ten carries tonight. This might be a situation right here where you decoy with Anderson and you scamble with a direct mm. direct run. And the snap goes to Anderson again here. Gets the first down across the forty and finally tripped up and taken down, but Enough for the first down for the Hawks. And Scamble can run just like Anderson. Anderson, of course, tougher to bring down. But they're both lining up back there and faking the snap. Seven-yard gain by Anderson. And you got to watch for who's going to take that ball. And that little bit of hesitation gives Anderson that first step. But he needs that explosive first step. Yeah, reads the holes good uh, and hits them hard. When he sees that hole, he is diving straight into it, not dancing around and going away from it. First and 10, ball at their own 44 for the Hawks, under five to go. Second quarter, Anderson again on the carry, right side, and not much doing there. Maybe a gain of one. One yard pickup. Ball spotted at the 45 yard line in an 8 8 game. 439 to go, second quarter, Hutchford.com scoreboard. Every play minus two has been on the ground for the Hawks. 
And now we're seeing more and more direct snaps to Anderson rather than Scammell, who's at the quarterback position. Less chance of the, fum the fumble on the exchange. This time Scammell got it and hands it off to Anderson. They go to the dive play to the left and gets it to the 50-yard line. Maybe the 49 of Floyd Central. They will give yes, six. they do. Here, he drove the pile. He hit the pile at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard short, and he drove it for that six yards. So about a third and three coming up here at the Floyd Central 49 for the Hawks. Clock at 3.38 before the half. Play clock at under 10. And some confusion down here. I hear whistles and a timeout will be called. We'll come back in one minute. Tied at eight with 3.29 to play. Back in one minute on WMDJ Sports. The timeout called by Pike Central after some confusion there on third down. Play clock was down to four, so that's why you got the timeout burnt. Here we go. Hawks will line up again with Scamble and Anderson in the backfield. Direct snap to Anderson looking for a hole. Not going to get there. Maybe one at the most or no gain at all. Let's wait and see. They're going to go with no gain. About a half a yard. He moved it a half a yard. We'll give him one. So a fourth and two now. Ball at the 40, just across the 49. It was, it was literally a half a yard pickup. Yeah, it's up. sitting right dead between the 49 and the 48. Got to get two and a half yards for a first down. Fourth down. Well, Central jumped in the neutral zone. Play clocks at 10. Quarterback looking now both ways. Play clock at five, four, and the snap to Anderson. Gets a block and will get the first down and more across the 40. First down, Hawks. Down to the 36-yard line. Well, I tell you, they really took that to the edge when they play clock and got it, though. 12 yards on the game. And Anderson continues to pile them up. 131 yards now on the night on 15 carries. First and 10, ball spotted at the 36 of Floyd Central. 2.08 to go before the half. Shotgun again, this time Scamble keeps it and will go forward. Straight dive, got maybe one out of that. Spot the ball at the 35. Second down and nine coming up now. Anderson going out. Interesting. Went out for he, he didn't take this previous play. He went forward, maybe got jarred. He's got hands on knees over there uh, on the sideline. He got to be a little tired. He's a workhorse tonight. Clock's at 123. Shotgun snap, man in motion, and whistles. From the side, looks like offsides on Floyd Central. 
Offsides on Floyd Central. So with that, Anderson, a pickup of five yards on the penalty. That is three penalties for 20 yards tonight by the Jaguars. Second down and five. Whistles again. Not sure why, but now they're ready. Clock at 107. Same play, man in motion, takes it on the sweep. That was number 10, Lane Adams for the Hawks. Takes it for about four, makes it third and one. Clock at 48 seconds. Big pot Central with only one timeout left. Apparently so. Shotgun, Scammell hands it off. Anderson back in the game, left side. Won't turn the corner, gets down to the 25-yard line. I think he's got enough for a first, first down. down, though. Yeah. That will stop the clock. Got just enough for the first down. Already passed his average. Clock never, game clock never stopped, 22 seconds. Snap for Scammell, back to pass. Had it knocked out of his hands. It was a forward pass incomplete. Got hit as he was Let cranking it out. Yeah. We got a strip sack there. Good thing there were no late hit calls or nothing on that one. Yeah. Uh, for Floyd Central. And now a timeout called by the Hawks and will be second and 10. We'll stay right here with 12 seconds to go before the half on the Hutchford.com scoreboard in an ugly first half of football, both sides. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing nothing to brag about on. Uh, definitely not winning a beauty contest here tonight. <laughs> it is homecoming, though. There's, there's some beauties out there. Well, there might be a few of them. Not in the game. <laughs> fo football, football wise, not so fast, yeah, my friend. A little bit. We'll update it on some scores. We'll update you on some scores around the area at the half. Coming up, Brock, your way by Douglas Ray Hall, your Floyd Circuit Court clerk. We understand that Pikeville has a 21-0 lead on LCA, Lexington Christian Academy. I was told that eight of their coaches flew in tonight to the Big Sandy Regional Airport. They <laughs> flew in for the game tonight. Do you believe that? No. But no, I, I got that from a pretty good source. Oh, well, all right. They flew in the coaching staff tonight. My Lord. I don't know what the M movie flight was on the way in. Here we go on second down and 10. Watch for the direct snap. Anderson takes it. He's going to throw it. Does. Puts it up in the air. Got a man caught. And down inside the five yard line. That was a pitch and catch to Malachi Doremus. Just like that, clock stops at six seconds. Got to snap and stop the ball. No, we no, going to run. keep it. Runs it to his own man. Scamble does and goes down. And the clock expires, and we go to the half, and Floyd Central avoids what wow. could have been a disastrous play here at the end of this half. Wow. Why, don't, why aren't you spiking the ball on that first down? Tried to catch him off guard. Yeah. And he did. If He, he might have made it if he didn't run into his Ran own into man. Into his own man. Wow. We're tied at eight at the half on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. It will be Floyd Central football to start things when we come back for the third quarter. We will take a break and return with your halftime report. Brought to you by Douglas Ray Hall, your Floyd County Circuit Court clerk. Back in three minutes on WMDJ Sports. Want to know the secret to a healthy smile? You won't find it in a bottle. The secret is found in simple, everyday brushing, flossing, and regular checkups with Martin Dentistry. Recently voted as the best dentist in Floyd County, Dr. Stacy Martin offers preventative general dentistry treatments and checkups to patients of all ages. Martin Dentistry would like to thank their patients for their trust and they look forward to serving you for years to come. Call for an appointment 285-9444 for Martin Dentistry. 
You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now, you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. Get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. When you need to know about your medications, it's important to know your pharmacist. Chris Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, John Newsom, and Terry Cancel at Howard Family Pharmacy, where Community Health Mart Pharmacy will always take time for you. And it's more convenient now than ever to fill your prescription. Simply use their free mobile app or log on to HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Quality care and service, where it's always about family. That's Howard Family Pharmacy of Allen and Eastern. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. In the race for district judge, experience matters. Tyler Green has served more than 11 years as an assistant county attorney, practicing law nearly every day in Floyd District Court. Tyler Green is a lifelong Floyd County resident, committed to keeping our community safe. Tyler Green is experienced in all areas of law that come before a district judge and will be ready to serve on day one. Elect experience. Elect Tyler Green as your next Floyd District Judge. Take over the cover to elect Tyler Green. I'm Brandi Bradley. My mommy taught me to do the right things even when it's hard. As a district judge, addicts are not going to get a slap on the wrist. If you get busted with dope, you've got a problem, and you're either going to sit in jail or get help. Real recovery takes time. You can't walk 40 miles into the wilderness and walk 5 miles and get out. As a public defender, I have seen every trick in the book. I'm not just on the ballot. I'm on a mission to make a difference. But I can't do it alone. I need your help. If you're as fed up with dope in Floyd County as I am, show up on November 8th and vote Brandis Bradley for Floyd District Judge. Paper by Brandis Bradley. Grammy Award winner and Country Music Hall of Fame member Marty Stewart is coming to Preston's Bird. It's Marty Stewart and his fabulous superlatives. Saturday, October 15th at 7.30. Tickets start at only $31. Call 188-MACARTS or MACARTS.com. Marty Stewart, Preston's Bird, October 15th. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Team Chevrolet Corvette, owned and driven by Nathan. We're at the Ray. half. Your score tied at eight on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. District action tonight here at Pike County Central High School on Buckley's Creek. Eight, eight, your Junior score. Junior Homecoming Junior night Junior happening Junior here Junior for Junior Pike County Junior Central. Junior they do it the Corvette old school Allen Junior Central Junior way Junior. with the uh, cars taking the beauties around the field. Yeah. They don't have the track that Allen Central had, but nevertheless, with no one on the field, they're driving them around. I always thought this was cool. You get your dad or your grandpa to take him around in a hot rod. You got to like that. It's pretty cool. There's some pretty nice cars out here as well. Yeah, good night to shine it up, take it around. And uh, as these girls get uh, in front of the home crowd, and uh, good night tonight for the Hawks as they're here at home uh, for the first time, as we said, since August and having their homecoming ceremony here tonight. Ugly football game, though, tied at eight here on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Our halftime report brought to you by your Floyd Circuit Court clerk, Douglas Ray Hall, who supports all Floyd County athletics. Best of luck to Floyd Central, Betsy Lane, and Prestonsburg. Black Cats on the road tonight, just as the Jaguars are. Betsy Lane at home tonight in football. Good luck to all Floyd County teams during the football season. And keep, keep pushing, keep driving, of course, also – Congratulations to Floyd Central's golf team as they picked up district wins in tournament play last night, boys and girls in golf last night. So congratulations from your Floyd Circuit Court clerk, Douglas Ray Hall, a longtime proud supporter of Floyd County Athletics. I'll get your impressions of the uh, first half. Besides being ugly, uh, Pike Central actually leaving two touchdowns on the field tonight. Yeah. I mean, this very easily could have been a 21-8 to uh, ball game right here. Uh, got inside the five, couldn't convert uh, on their first drive, and then, I mean, just what you would have to consider a lack of judgment uh, by Scamble not to spike the ball with six seconds as, you know, he – he did catch everyone off credit off give him some credit for catching everyone off guard, but unable 
to punch it in from four yards out. As a gutsy call. As a gutsy call. I don't know if that was a design call or a – he just went uh, rogue and went on his own. Statistics, Josh has got those tonight. Uh, a run-heavy first half for both Pike Central and Floyd Central. The Jaguars carrying the ball 15 times total for a net 84 yards. Pike Central, 24 carries for 155 yards, 134 of those yards coming from Matt Anderson, who also has a touchdown. B.J. Peterson, the lone rushing touchdown for Floyd Central. Passing, Floyd Central, 2 of 3 for 10 yards. Pike Central, 1 of 4 for 21 yards. That one completion coming from running back Matt Anderson to receiver Malachi DeRamus right there at the end of the first half. Penalties, three for Floyd Central for 20 yards, two penalties for 10 yards for the Pike County Central Hawks. No turnovers to speak of a clean game in terms of turnover or turning the football over. Time of possession, not a huge factor in this one. You all mentioned Pike Central leaving some points on the board potentially. 9.47 for the Jaguars, 14.06 for the Hawks. A relatively even game across the board, especially in the one that matters most, the points on the scoreboard. You look at the plays, and you see an interest with 17 of the team's touches in that first half. Obviously, that's who they're keying on every time. So many direct snaps to him. But the defense has made some adjustments, and besides that one 56-yard play, they've been able to kind of slow them down a little bit. He, they've done a really good job of stringing him out and, and sideline to sideline, not letting him get a full head of steam for the most part between the tackles, aside from that one that one long run and maybe another run or two. But they've really done a nice job of bouncing him to the outside and limiting his yardage to, to three to five yards, which is still a good average. But you really kind of minimize the damage when you don't allow him to get 10, 12, 14 yards a pop on the ground. As for Floyd Central, uh, Byron with B.J. Peterson, six carries, 50 yards, and a score. Finally punching one in after six tries thanks to a couple penalties. And the Jags dig punch a score in to take an early lead at 8 nothing. But nice to see Peterson involved in some plays tonight. Peterson getting a lot of touches early. I like that. Uh, I think we all do. I uh, agree that he's probably one of the, if not the most dynamic, he's probably the one, the two or three most dynamic players that Floyd Central has out and out on the field and can get him the ball. And however you get him the ball is going to be nothing but a plus because he's doing nothing but turning positive yards every time he touches the ball. And just a simple observation here from the ball game is – you know, when Floyd Central wants to go to the uh, power look with, you know, either out of the bone or the straight eye, whatever they want to run, they seem to be, to me, seem they're not at moving the ball as effectively when they've got Peterson alone as a lone back in the backfield with, you know, three receivers, two to one side, one to the uh, open side, whichever way they want to do it. And, just, and that allows space for Peterson to get out and work instead of bunching everything up, allowing Pike Central to load the box with seven, eight, nine guys in the box and really just busting through that line, and they're not doing a good job of picking that up right now. Going to have to see maybe a pass or two out of that same formation, though, just to keep that defense honest well, uh, with Peterson when he's alone set back. Well, the other thing about it is they haven't went to it as much. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when you go to it three, four times, you know, you see success, but then you want to go back to the power look. And, you know, that that would be my biggest change right here. Maybe go back out with a little more spread. Uh, give the pass the option. They've completed a couple passes uh, in the open field. Ten yards. So, I mean, and nothing spectacular, but something to keep them honest to allow Peterson to have that room to work. It is an extended halftime here tonight due to homecoming festivities for Pike Central. We'll come back with more of our halftime report. Brought your way by Douglas Ray Hall, your Floyd Circuit Court clerk, longtime supporter of Floyd County Athletics. Back in three minutes on WMDJ Sports. Hi, everybody, Dave Baker here for Total Pharmacy Care. And football, the object on Friday nights is to prove your team is better than their team. Well, the Total Pharmacy Care, we prove that every day. Our team of pharmacists on the field prescriptions are cards and candy or not the items. Just complete focus 
self explaining and filling your prescriptions. So tell your doctor to choose between the total pharmacy care located in Belfast, Belfast, Piper, Prestonburg, and Martin. It's not just the name, it's a pharmacy. This is Terry Clark, Kirk, Douglas Ray Hall, with my message to all student athletes in Floyd County. It's been said that others may have more talent than you, but remember, there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. Remember that every champion was once only a contender. Be confident, take risks, and know that failure and rejection are the first steps to success. Good luck to all Floyd County schools from the Circuit Court Clerk, Douglas Ray Hall. Inside the train testing facility, our heating and cooling products are put through 16 weeks of extreme temperature fluctuations to simulate five years of wear and tear. 150 degrees one day, sub-zero temperatures the next. We test so it runs. One call and you will be Just call 437-7368 for Elliott Heating and Cooling. It's hard to stop a train. You want the value, you want the savings, all the selection that you're looking in for. We got the service, we teach you better. Come on and see us and you'll save us more. Patriot RV of Prestonsburg is your RV headquarters and more. In fact, we are authorized dealer for Club Car Golf Carts. Club Car is America's premier line of golf carts, and you'll find a huge selection in all styles and colors. There's 0% financing available for 48 months for qualified buyers. Patriot RV, US 23 in Prestonsburg. Hi, Kenny Rice here for A-Plus Roofing and Exteriors. Are you needing to improve your home or business exterior? Let the pros at A-Plus Roofing and Exteriors help. They specialize in roof replacement and will work with your insurance when it comes to wind or hail damage. A-Plus Roofing can also replace or repair gutters and siding. They have over a decade of experience to handle your job correctly and efficiently. Contact Travis Francis for a free estimate at 606-791-4226 or visit A-Plus Roofing ky.com that's a plus roofing and exteriors of hazard and lexington hello this is brandon spencer republican candidate for state representative of the 95th district floyd and pike county can you imagine one football player trying to win a game by themselves they would never get anything done you must have a team working together that's why i'm asking for your vote on november the 8th i can work with senator Rand paul and congressman hal rogers in the republican controlled house and senate with your vote, you'll have a team working for Floyd and Pike Counties. Paid for by Brandon Spencer. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Also representing the senior class is attended. Back at the half, homecoming festivities continue for Pike Central tonight. An extended halftime here this evening. Tied at eight on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. As we continue our halftime report, We've got some scores from around the area. We are working on a Betsy Lane score if uh, our partner in crime, Jeremy, would answer the phone. But uh, <laughs> oh, he must be he must be working right now. So he says. So he says. Yeah. We, he said he was working the time we were over there, and video evidence says otherwise. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so uh, we'll try to get a Betsy Lane update on the other oh, game. Uh, we do know that Eastridge is leading Prestonsburg 16-14, closing in on the half. Eastridge 16 and Prestonsburg 14. The Black Cats for the hangover game tonight. I was going to say, could that be the hangover for them? Because it's been a pretty big thing for them this week uh, about, you know, beating Floyd Central, being undefeated at the moment, uh, heading into district play. Got a lot of momentum riding for them. It looks that way. I mean, but obviously a hangover game looming here possibly. Possibly so. Pikeville is owning Lexington Christian Academy. 35-14. Pikeville leading that game nearby over at the Hamley Athletic Complex. And also, oh, 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 oh. I got a Betsy Lane update for you. They are up 40 to 6. Wow. Homecoming night, 40 to 6 year score. Betsy Lane on top of Phelps tonight. Uh, no surprise there uh, this evening on that. And also, Belfry has a 29 to 8 lead on McGoffin County. Of course, interested in that game 
because of district implications. So we'll have some, some scores around the area. Pineville score kind of surprised me, 35 to 14, uh, just the margin. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, not, East not, Ridge. Ne not necessarily that they're up, that they've put up 35 points more than the separation of it. I mean, you're looking at almost a running clock here against LCA. And they've just named homecoming queen, and I didn't hear it. <laughs> Sorry. Say it again. Darby Powers named homecoming queen here tonight for Pike Central. So congratulations to Miss Darby, dressed in orange tonight, apropos for the homecoming event. Is this her car here? Is this her car? Man, oh, man. It's a nice one. I think you said it was a 56, 56 Corvette. It's a Corvette, yeah. Black in color, 56 Corvette. Black Showroom is, shine I tonight. Mean, that is sharp. Yes, sir. A 1959 Chevrolet Corvette. And she'll have a seat and take the, the route around as she is the homecoming queen tonight. We'll take another break and come back with more reaction and halftime report festivities here at Pike Central. 8-8 eight, eight your score on the Hutchboard.com scoreboard back in three minutes on WMDJ Sports. Hi, everybody. Dave Baker here for Citizens Bank of Kentucky. You know that old saying that time is money? Well, it's true. How about putting extra cash in your pocket each month by refinancing with new low rates at CBK? All you have to do is log on to wearecitizens.bank. Hi, everybody. Dave Baker here for Citizens Bank of Kentucky. The next time you see someone smiling while they're driving their car, it's probably because they just took advantage of the new low interest rate at CBK. What are you waiting for? Log on to wearecitizens.bank and start smiling. Loans are subject to credit approval and equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Apple Watch and Wireless has a plan to make your life simpler. It's called Forward Pay. No contract, no credit check, no problem. Plans start at $19.99 a month and include unlimited talk and text. Add 3 gigabytes of data, $29.99 per month. 6 gigabytes, $39.99 per month. Or take it to the max with unlimited data plus. Just $89.99 per month with 50 gigabytes of high-speed data. All the features of post-pay service without a long-term commitment. It's Forward Pay because we are you. We are Apple Watch and Wireless. Data plus, plus 1 megabyte per second. That's 50 gigabytes of use. Hello, this is Earl Justice of Hutchford and Paintsville and West Liberty. We here at Hutchford are committed to the area students, athletes, and their growth and dedication to teamwork and excellence on and off the field. It is our hope that each team will have an excellent season and make memories that last a lifetime. Every team knows to win the big game, you have to want it more than the other team. At Hutchford, our team wants to sell you their next vehicle more than anyone else, and we can prove it. Shop us online at Hutchford and Paintsville and West Liberty. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now, you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities. built on trust. Parkview Pharmacy at Mini takes pride in being committed to the community. Pharmacist Valerie Akers and Christy Moore understand your time is valuable, which is why Parkview Pharmacy offers free delivery service for your prescriptions. The next time you stop in, ask about online refills for faster service and pick up one of those wonderful Candlebear candles. Parkview Pharmacy at Mini, 377-117, committed to our community. Friends, this is Rocky Adkins, a proud Eastern Kentuckian. When I met Ashley Tackett Lafferty, I knew right away that she shared a passion to fight for the bright future that Eastern Kentucky deserves. I watched as Ashley went the extra mile to open the doors of the Southeast State Correctional Complex and the jobs it will provide. And the local roads like 680 Connector and the expansion of the Mountain Parkway through Prestonsburg. Trust me when I say that Ashley Tackett Lafferty is the voice you need in Frankfurt. Hey, Joe, by Ashley Tackett Lafferty for State Representative. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Turn the mic on. Getting ready for the third quarter here tonight. Floyd Central and Pike Central. We're tied at eight on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. An update again for Prestonsburg. Getting some intel on what's been going on for them tonight. A 21-16 Black Cat lead at the half. I understand that uh, Porter went down with injury early in the first quarter. Mm. 
And the Black Cats have scored 14 points off a couple of fumbles tonight. Wow. Oh, yeah. So the offense hasn't been clicking for them. I had to, I had to drive over there about a week or week and a half or something to go for Bryson for some little little football. And that's a haul. Andrew down in that hole was the first time I'd been to the football field. I didn't, Really? For, yeah, first time I'd been to that football it's field. A nice, it's a nice field. It's a nice field. It's a nice setup. I liked it. But it kind of sets over that hill. It's yep. kinda, you feel like you're down in a hole. With the mountains all around you. I mean, it's a beautiful setting. It is. It's nice. And, you know, we had a couple friends. We cheered and yelling, and it just echoed real nice over there. <laughs> so everybody could hear you. I've done a few games over there in my lifetime, and I can honestly tell you, I don't think I ever caught a win for a Floyd County team when I went over there. It was either uh, last year for Floyd Central or uh, Allen Central in the past, a couple of trips. Uh, never Some uh, sports superstitions here tonight, maybe? I, possibly so. Possibly so. I think we all changed up a few things. Well, to, to relive <laughs> some of that misery uh, from the Floyd Central side, Josh has been over here digging around some numbers. Uh, go ahead and wow us with your statistics. <laughs> well, I was just curious because we, we've talked a lot about Matt Anderson leading up to this game, and obviously here in the first half he's got – 134 yards, which is already his. I won. I got one. Oh, he gets went backwards. I had 152. Well, he went. He got for a loss a couple times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 134. Net, a net 134. Uh, in the three previous games against Floyd Central, 109 yards and a touchdown. That was his freshman year. Okay. Okay. Breakout 225 and two as a sophomore. We were here for that one. Mm -hmm. And then last year 194 and two. At home. And All if right. you're keeping track, that's about a 180 per game. It's not bad. Not bad. I feel like he's going to hit the 200 mark tonight. Yeah, I feel that way. Easily we'll get to 200 yards. Easily tonight. I guess the set the over-under at 210. 210? Look at you. I, show, oh. show me something. Under. Under? I'll take the under. Take, all right. Wow. I hope it's under. That's, wow. that's what I was like. I hope it's under. If, it, if it's under, we win. Yeah. If it's under, it's a win for Floyd Central. If it's over that 210, Jimmy the Greek, it's going to be another <laughs> loss. We just ran for 134. I don't know how you're going to say he I can't, get 80, eight, can't get 80 <laughs> more here <laughs> in the second half. Floyd Central will have the football to begin things here tonight. We appreciate you joining us here on WMDJ Sports as we – Bring you high school football tonight, presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. If if I'm not mistaken, this is the closest a halftime score has been, other than well, it's a tie. Possibly the first meeting uh, between the two teams. Uh, well, the second game, yeah, the first game was a two point differential with Pike Central winning. The uh, second game was a low-scoring game, kind of like we got going on tonight, and the last uh, three have all been Katie Bar the door games. So, been last team of the, last you know, team a, a turnover or two actually hurt uh, Floyd Central in those other matchups yeah. where they just played from behind, got down by two scores and couldn't keep up. So, had one half down, tied at eight. Let's see what happens. This is a big first drive uh, for Floyd Central here on first possession. Let's see if uh, what happens here on the kickoff. We got Adams back for Adams and Peterson, Peterson I believe. Now Peterson's over there. Got Adams and I believe this is Adams. It'll be an onside kick. It's a live ball, and I think Pike Central has recovered it. And indeed, they have. The Hawks recover an onside kick. And right in business is Pike Central here, tied at eight to start the half. Tough start here in the third quarter. Ball at the 46 of Floyd Central. Anderson. Right. And Scammo in the backfield. You'll get that direct snap to, to Anderson or, or maybe a handoff. We'll wait and see what happens here. Floyd Central got to come back real quick here uh, and get over this and not let this. Shake that, it off. Shake it off quickly. Handoff to Anderson. Looks for a hole right side. And we'll pull it down to around the 41, 42-yard line. Wait for a spot. 
No, 43-yard line. Only a three-yard gain. Eighteen carries and 137 yards now for Anderson. And they'll shift again. Now they'll see Anderson with a direct snap. And the keeper up the middle gets it across the 40 and down near the pile, near the uh, stick. I think he's going to be just short, maybe. Signaling third down. Got him right between the 36 and 37. Yard line. I think the nose, back edge of the football is on the 37. It's about a one yard shy of where he needed to be. About six on the, about six on the carry. Up to 143 yards. Handoff again. Anderson right side takes it down the sideline for a first down. Still on his feet and down inside the 20. Red zone time for the Hawks after the onside kick recovery. We're going to spot him on the 15, I believe. Twenty-two on the carry. Twenty-two yards on his 20th carry tonight. For 165 yards and ticking. You want to go back and revisit that 210 look? I'm, I said it. <laughs> you own it. Snap and a handoff. This time they go a handoff to Cameron Flannery. He takes the ball through the gap for about a one-yard gain. Flannery's first carry tonight. Give Anderson maybe a little bit of a break here. Keep him fresher throughout the half. Second down and nine. Ball is placed. Inside the uh, 15, around the 14-yard line. Snap, Anderson takes it again on the direct snap left side. Trying to turn, and they stretch him out. There's a flag, and he's hit and wrapped up out of bounds, but a flag is down, clock in the back. Looks to be the call. It'll be a big one. Again, I like what Floyd Central could do there to string it out, make him go from sideline to sideline. It is a block in the back against Pike Central. Good break for the Jaguars. Big 10-yard penalty puts the ball back around the 27-yard line. Uh, second down and long here. Second down on Town Mountain Road. It's a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. It also goes from the spot of the foul, and that was in the yeah. backfield as well. Yes, it was. Ball back at the 27-yard line. Man in motion and whistles again. And another and another flag. Hold the phone here. A false start. Definitely a false start. I was afraid it was going to be something else to the White Hat threw one in kind of late after two other flags had already been thrown. Tackle on five more. Now back around the 32. She looks like Shelby Anna. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I suppose it said south side of pop. But, you know. It's a long way long down there. Way. There's that shift. It'll go to Anderson on direct snap. Keeps it right side. Cuts it up across the 30. Still on his feet. Still running down to the sideline. And, oh, my goodness. He's close to the first down. Sure is. Got it down inside the 10. Around the six or seven-yard line. So, now it goes. A 35-yard gain, and it's now third and about three or four. My goodness. We'll say it's on the 10-yard line. But the best we can tell, yeah, right around the 10 or 9. 
And another snap and a run across the 10 and down. It's short. That was Scammell on the carry, the keeper. A two-yard pickup. Fourth and short. Well, for a break here. Fourth and short. I think he went from the, I think he's on the six. Yeah, it's right on the six-yard line. You're right. So, fourth and one from the Floyd Central six for Pike Central in their first drive of the third quarter. Hand off to Anderson, scoots through a hole, and he's in there for a touchdown. Six yards. A Gearhart Broadband touchdown. Better broadband means better lives with Gearhart Broadband. And check out Gearhart TV for over 200 streaming channels. Anderson, 23 carries, 192 yards. <coughs> What's that about? Jimmy? I had something in my throat. Uh-huh. Hawks retake the lead here. They'll go for the two-point conversion at the exact eight-minute mark here in the third quarter. Snap. It's a busted Fumble. play. Fumble. And so the two-point conversion fails. So after an onside kick recovery, Hawks marks downfield, punch it in, 14-8. Pike Central leads back in one minute, WMDJ Sports. Back at Buckley Street tonight, Pike County Central High School. The Hawks have a 14-8 lead, eight minutes to play in the third quarter on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. As Isaac Blankenship will kick the football away for the Hawks here. On Saturday again. Let's see. Or no, nope, excuse me, that's not him. That is actually Patrick Mandrell doing the kicking duties. And this time, slip kick, and they'll let it go out of bounds. So we'll see the Jaguar offense here for the first time in the second half. You know, Floyd Central got to bounce back right here. This is a huge drive uh, to kind of answer what momentum that Pike Central just kind of stole from you. You had to feel good about yourself getting the ball, starting the second half. Pike Central just snatched it away and took the momentum. Jaguars had 10 men on the field on the kickoff. 10. Caught a break. Yeah. Kicking it out of bounds there. Ball placed at the 35. Martin from shotgun. Man in motion. And handoff will go to the man in motion. Peterson on the sweep. Turns the corner. Got the first down and more. Met and across the 50. Took a big hit. From Kenson Childers, but not before he picks up a huge gain on first down. Looks like we gave 19 yards on the carry with a generous spot, I feel like, up to the 46. We'll take it. Nice job by Peterson on the run. Now, if I have 70 yards on eight carries. First and 10 Jaguars in Hawk territory at the 46. 
Martin from Shotgun. A man in motion again is Peterson. They fake the handoff to him. Cranking it up, a throw down field. Got a man. Oh! Just off the fingertips of Buck. Just a little too far. Boy, oh boy. Love that call. If he catches that in stride, he's gone. Yeah, he catches that. That is nothing but pay dirt. Yeah. Ooh. Right there at his fingertips. Get some stick them on them hands. And Buck was steaming downfield to catch up with it. Yeah. Just a touch long. Shelton checks out. Back in is Sheston Johnson. Second down and 10. Got to love that aggressive play call. Under center. They'll go to the flex bone here. And handoff up the middle as Sheston Johnson gets across the 45 and wrapped up quickly. Two-yard pickup. 11 yards on the game. Third and eight coming up for Floyd Central at the Hawk 44. You'd have to imagine this is probably four down territory here too. Has to be. Can't can't give that can't give the ball back to that Pike Central offense and Matt Anderson right now. Down 14 to eight, 6:33 to play third quarter. This is four down territory here. Shotgun for. Martin rolls out to the left, wants to throw it. He's got the safety valve. Peterson hits him, and not much there. Maybe a yard. Or nothing. Ran out of real estate. Fourth down, and they'll say no gain on the play. No gain. So fourth and eight. We're going to punt. They are. They're lining up the punt, or they're showing it anyway. Pike Central, nobody back. There's the snap. Peterson rolling out, looking, and will punt the football away, and it will go out of bounds. Down around the 25, I believe. So the Jags punt the football away in Hawk territory. Give it back to Pike Central with 6-11 to go. Third quarter down 14-8 to eight on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. After the big gainer by Peterson, the drive stalls out. Like the aggressive play call with the deep pass off play action to mm -hmm. Peterson again. And it you know, just couldn't, like, couldn't get their feet back under them. Pike Central taking over here at the 22-yard line. Put them in, in the slot here now. They're going to give you a different look. Still, though, Anderson in the backfield, along that, with Scamble. That far side is wide open. Watch the direction I have here to Anderson. Handoff to Anderson, takes it to that open side, and... Floyd Central there to stop anything from happening. One or nothing. Looks like nothing. No gain on the play. Second and 10. Ball at the Pike Central 22. Clock rolling at 5.45 to go. Third quarter on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. You think Pike Central might want to start burning clock? Drawing some, drawing the offense out. Both of these teams rather hungry for a victory. Pike Central at one and four, Floyd Central at zero oh and five. Shotgun snap to Scammell waits, and he's going to keep it. Tries to cut it out to the outside. Broke one tackle. Now pulls ahead for maybe a yard or two. He is shy of the twenty-five yard line. I thought they were going to give him two. Two on the two on the carry for Scammell. I don't know. They might, maybe one. That one. Like the, that Josh like says 20, one. That looks like the 23. One yard on the pickup. Wow. Yeah, they moved the stick back. Good call, Josh. Good catch. And But now with Anderson, third and eight, you got to go to him here. I mean, it was – Second and a mile. There it is, Anderson with it. 
Got and him. Ah, they got him. How about up. that? They wrapped up at the 25. Brings up fourth down, and the Hawks will punt, and you get a stop. Wow. Nice answer by the Floyd Central defense here. Makes that punt decision a lot better. Well, you're playing the field game now. Playing the field game. I mean, you still, it's just a one possession game. I mean, you got to play the field game at this point still. Peterson back to receive. Punt is away. Peterson will take it and skirts away. Not much. Got across the 50 and went down. So the Jags have it near mid at it midfield. Down by one score, 14 to 8, 356 to play in the third quarter. Let's see if they can get the wheels rolling now. I'm interested to see what kind of looks they're going to come back with and who gets the first touch here. I mean, I th personally, I think he put it in Peterson's hands. But haven't, haven't called a lot of Blake Adams tonight. That's, that's what I was getting ready to say. Haven't heard a lot of Adams tonight. Adams and Shelton only uh, combining for four carries. You know, Adams lined up here on the outside edge. And in motion is Peterson. He'll take it. Cuts it right side. Across the 45, across the 40, first down. Deeper in the Hawk territory. Well, you called that one. Again, don't fool around. Give it to the guy that's I think that can do the most damage. Peterson a little shook up here. Down to the 38. A 12-yard gain there. 82 yards on eight carries for Peterson. First and 10 Jags at the Pike Central 38 with 3.34 to play in the third, down 14 to eight on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Under center, Martin turns, hands it off, and he's gonna keep it though, rolling out. Got some pressure, eludes it, throws it, had it batted away, incomplete. Them 5'9 guys in his face. Yes, so-called 5'9 linemen that Pike Central list on their uh, depth chart. Hey, don't want a 5'9, I'll tell you that. That cat that was back there in his in his face, number 58, Zach Brooks, listed at 5'9". I can clearly tell you he's at least 6'2", 6'3". I mean, Martin's listed at 5'7". He had more than two inches on him. <laughs> he had a foot. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Hello. Second down and 10 for the Jags here. As the lineup looks like straight eye behind, uh, two setbacks behind Martin. And Johnson and Adams. And a turn and a slip, and Martin has to just cut it up. It was supposed to go to Adams, it looked like. I think I think that was the design misdirection that, you know, we've seen Martin. Oh, it didn't open up. Yeah, yeah. didn't hope, open up. Uh, lineman there for Pike Central did a good job holding their ground as they're going to mark that as a loss of two. Got third and 12 from the 40 now. Got Jace Martin out to the left. Brody Buck to the right. Flex bone formation. Man in motion in around his Shelton, and they'll fake the handoff. Martin looks to crank it up, throws it, intercepted. Picked off by the Hawks and out of bounds. Possession back to Pike Central. A tough second half for the Jaguars here. The onside kick, you get a stop, and then you throw the interception on third and 12. That's the seventh interception of the season, I believe, by Martin. The, yes, the seventh INT of the season. You know, offensive line breaking down uh, for Martin and not really giving him time to throw right there. Last two pass plays, somebody has been in his face and another one chasing. So first and 10, Pike Central at, the, at their own 43. Anderson will go to work and gets it across the 45 and down to the 46-yard line, actually 47-yard line. A pickup of four. One ninety-seven now on twenty-five carries for Matt Anderson of the Hawks. 
And time just keeps ticking away. 2.07 to go, third quarter on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Second down and a long, about a seven here. There's the snap and fake. Anderson throws it. Caught. Doramus across the 40 and going down inside the 30-yard line. Or actually, Blankenship on the reception, excuse me. Isaac Blankenship with the pitching catch from Anderson. Moves the ball downfield for the Hawks. It's 28 yards on the on the pass. So Anderson, his second or his first completion of the night. Second. Yeah, second. You're right. He got the big one before the half. 28 yards to Blankenship. In Floyd Central Territory. Back on the ground we go. Running the football across the 15, 10, and in business. First and goal coming up now for Pike Central. Big run by the Hawks. And that was Scamble on the keeper. Where are we at? The five? The 26 to the five. 21. 21-yard run by Scammell. And the snap to Anderson. Finds a hole right side and will take it in for six more. 20 to 8. Pike Central on top. 104 to play. Third quarter on the Hutchford.com scoreboard at a six- Got an eight-yard run there for Anderson. Oh, was he on the eight? I'm going to see what Josh had. Seven. Puts him over 200 yards on the night. And a Gearheart Broadband touchdown. Better broadband means better lives with Gearheart Broadband. Two third-quarter scores by Anderson. And now the two-point conversion. Anderson looks for a hole. And takes it in. 22 to 8, your score. 104 to play, third quarter, back in one minute on WMDJ Sports. In the race for district judge, experience matters. Tyler Green has served more than 11 years as an assistant county attorney, practicing law nearly every day in Floyd District Court. Tyler Green is a lifelong Floyd County resident, committed to keeping our community safe. Tyler Green is experienced in all areas of law that come before a district judge and will be ready to serve on day one. Elect experience. Elect Tyler Green as your next Floyd District Judge. Paid for by the county to elect Tyler Green. Lag is the bane of all gamers, so make that annoying experience a thing of the past with the blazing fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. We offer speeds up to one gig, so you can game, stream, surf, and shop on multiple devices without slowing down. Get started now at imctv.com or give us a call at 606-478-9406 for more info. Remember, better broadband means better lives. Live and local, there's only one. WMDJ. Pike Central, another score. They lead 22 to 8, 104 to play third quarter on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. As Mandrell will kick it again. Squib kick. Muffed. Pike Central's got it. Start the bus and go home. My God. Start the bus and go home. Wow. No words. This thing <laughs> is falling apart. Ball at the 46 for Pike Central at the Jaguar 46-yard line. A disastrous third quarter for Floyd Central. If it could go wrong, it has. Yeah. That's two onside kicks recovered. Direct snap, Anderson going to take it up the middle. Getting a push. Down inside the 40-yard line. They got spun around and had to jump over the pile for an extra yard or two. 
Seven yards on the pickup. Ball at the 39. 211 yards and still running for Anderson here. Uh, second down and three. Ball of the Floyd Central 39. Clock at 28 seconds left in the third. There's a bad snap, and P Scamble has to fall on it way back in Pike Central Territory. And they'll spot it actually right at the 50. Well, yeah, that's a still a loss on the play for Scamble. And that should be the yards. final play of this uh, quarter here. It's an 11-yard loss. And it will be indeed. The final play of the third quarter. We'll come back for the fourth. It is Pike Central 22, Floyd Central 8 in the three. Back in one minute on WMDJ Sports. Grammy Award winner and Country Music Hall of Fame member Marty Stewart is coming to Preston's Bird. It's Marty Stewart and his fabulous superlatives. Saturday, October 15th at 7.30. Tickets start at only $31. Call 188-NICARDS or NICARDS.com. Marty Stewart, Preston's Bird, October 15th. When you need to know about your medications, it's important to know your pharmacist. Chris Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, John Newsom, and Terry Cancel, and Howard Family Pharmacy, your community health mark pharmacy, will always take time for you. And it's more convenient now than ever to fill your prescription. Simply use their free mobile app or log on to HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Quality care and service, where it's always about family. That's Howard Family Pharmacy of Allen and Eastern. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. Ball on the 50-yard line starting in the fourth quarter on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Pock Central on top, 22-8. to eight. And with the ball again, handoff, went to Anderson, gives it back, out of the middle, breakaway run inside the 35 and down for Lane Adams. The whole defense buying in, obviously, on Anderson, who's over 200 yards, and he quickly handed it off to Adams and shot out of a rocket for the first down. 17 yards on the carry there, a little misdirection. Everybody, like you said, everybody keyed on Anderson, and as soon as Adams seen the hole, he shot through it. First and 10 Hawks at the Floyd Central 33. Fourth quarter presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Direct snap again to Anderson. Right side. Cuts it across the 30. Got a hit and plowed over Shelton. Shelton went low to take him yeah. down. Yeah. Nice tackle. Carried by Matt Anderson. Down to the 22. Another first down. Gain of 11. 222. On 28 carries for Matt Anderson. And Pike Central threatening to go up by three scores here. Just outside the red zone of the Floyd Central 22. And the chances Anderson gets a direct snap here. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for it. Nope. It went to Scamble and misplayed it. Just tucks it and runs it up the middle. And may have gotten two out of that. Up to the 20, looks like. Yes, sir. Carry by Scamble brings up second down for the Hawks. <laughs> Floyd Central's interior defense uh, has got to find a way to get some pushback against this line of Pike Central and start blowing some plays up in the backfield here. Yeah, not seen a lot of that at all here in this uh, second half. Uh, a couple of demoralizing onside kick recoveries by Pike Central, and that's what's really hurt this Floyd Central team here in the second half. By high snap, Anderson gathers it, though, and, oh, hit hard in the backfield. It's a loss on the play. He'll bounce up, though. 
Peter, it looked like Peterson got the initial hit to slow him down, and Wells finished him off. Wow. Be a loss of only two, looks like. Maybe three. Three. Clock down to 9.29 in the fourth quarter. Hawks up 22-8. to eight, Third and 11 at the Floyd Central 23. Play clock at 10. A bad snap right here. Be very fortunate for Floyd Central. I've had a couple of bad snaps. This one right to Anderson. And will be down right across the 20, the 19-yard line. Gain of four, I believe. So about a fourth and eight coming up for the Hawks. District play beginning tonight. Pike Central trying to get that initial win to go 1-0 in district play as they have done against this team in five consecutive previous meetings. Fourth and about eight. Anderson will throw the short pass. It's caught, but shy of what he needed as he's down behind the 15. Had to get inside the uh, 11. I think they're going to give him the 15. But it's a turnover on downs, so the defense holds it for Floyd Central. Pass was complete to Blankenship. Look at that little misdirection down where they just give Anderson the option, just throw it. Yeah, four, four yards on that. So now the Jaguar offense takes over. This is, what, the second time they've touched the ball? Third. Third time? They've only ran eight plays, though. Total. Here in the second half. In the second half. Got to go in a hurry here. Down by two scores. And off goes a sweep to Peterson right side. Cuts it. Keeps going. There's a flag. And another, another flag. flag. Might be a hold and a face mask. Offsetting possibly. Wait for the call. Just by judging where the flags came in. Right. One came in around a hold. And then other, another one come in towards the end kind of would indicate a face mask or a horse collar possibly. And here comes Christian Cottle with the call. It is a hold on Floyd Central. Personal foul face mask on Pike Central. Offsetting penalties. Repeat first down. Penalties will be offset. Free play first down. They got a solid nine-yard run right there by Peterson. Negated. Clock stops, though, 8-17 here in the fourth. Ball placed at their own 16-yard line for the Jaguars here. And, again, they got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Shotgun to throw. Martin got some window room, but now for the blind side, taken down. Back behind the 5-2. Well, that was supposed to be a stop-and-go route. And there was no go after the stop. Tackle made by Mandrell. Second and Ratliff's Creek now for the Jaguars. These are the ball in the six, I believe. Yeah. Martin, the empty backfield, keeps it, runs it up the middle, breaks a tackle. Across the 15 and down across the 20-yard line. Nice gain by Martin to pick up what he had lost and then some on second down and now a manageable third down coming up. He, he just went straight for the run over side of that far defender there to get that extra yard. About a 15-yard run by Martin. Put him up around the 21. A third and five, and handoff Adams. Stiff arms, he gets a first down, down the sideline, and pushed out of bounds right around the 44, 45 yard line. Nice run by Adams, who gets only his third touch of the night. 24 yards on the run by Adams. 24, uh, yeah, 24 on the run. 24 on the run. 
Clock stops at 6.52. Score update on Prestonsburg, 35-24. Black Cats, third quarter. Jarvis with five touchdowns in that game tonight. Wow. And keeper, Martin, scampering up the middle. Hit. Stays on his feet. Nice job, Max. Down to the 45-yard line of Pike Central. Took the blow and kept going. Ten yards for Max Martin there. Hey, he took that blow and stood his ground and got that extra yard for the first down. Whistles are blowing. Timeout, Pike Central. Timeout. We'll take the timeout to 631 to play. Fourth quarter, 22-8 Pike Central. Back in one minute on WMDJ Sports. Want to know the secret to a healthy smile? You won't find it in a bottle. The secret is found in simple, everyday brushing, crossing, and regular checkups with Martin Dentistry. Recently voted as the best dentist in Floyd County, Dr. Stacy Martin offers preventative general dentistry treatments and checkups to patients of all ages. Martin Dentistry would like to thank their patients for their trust and they look forward to serving you for years to come. Call for an appointment 285-9444 for Martin Dentistry. I'm Brandon Bradley. My mommy taught me to do the right thing even when it's hard. As Floyd District Judge, addicts are not going to get a slap on the wrist. If you get busted with dope, you've got a problem, and you're either going to sit in jail or get help. Real recovery takes time. You can't walk 40 miles into the wilderness and walk 5 miles and get out. As a public defender, I have seen every trick in the book. I'm not just on the ballot. I'm on a mission to make a difference, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. If you're as fed up with dope in Floyd County as I am, show up on November 8th and vote Brandon Bradley for Floyd District Judge. Hey, clear by Brandon. Is Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. First and, ten, first and 10, Floyd Central. Ball at the 45 of Pike Central. 631 remaining. Spread formation. Martin in the pocket. Airs it out. Oh. oh. Shelton running just a go route right down the hash there. I mean, a little bit off that, and that is pay dirt. Yeah. I mean, Martin, I mean, Shelton had a 10-yard cushion in any direction. Nobody covered him. Nobody. Shelton open, Jace Martin open, just a flat-out go route. Had his pick of who he wanted to go to. Overthrew it. Second and 10 again. Trips out to the left. Now they're going to put a man in motion. Martin. Out of the pocket, escapes, tucks it, and runs it down the sideline and out of bounds near the 30. And a flag. Late hit. Late hit on Pike Central afterwards. Pike Central don't like it. It was there. It was there. Well after the play was over. He was he was a good two, three yards out of bounds. Well, there's a break. 620 left. So from the spot of the foul after the gain. Of about, it was close to 15, 20. 15 yards is what Josh has got. Well, I'll go with Josh. <laughs> I thought he got another yard, yard or two down closer to the 25. That will spot the ball. At the 15. Right at the 15. Need a big play right here. Just go ahead and punch it in from 15 out. Peterson in motion. Hand off. No. Keeper for Martin. Can't get out of the backfield that time. Maybe a loss of one. Yes, sir. Loss of one. Well, it's central lining back up here. Second down and 11. Around the 16-yard line. Handoff Peterson cuts it right side up across the 15 and down. About five looks like on the carry up down around the, the 10. Up around the 10, yes, sir. Say the yeah, the 10 looks like the sticks right beside it. Yeah, Peterson five yards on that. 87 yards unofficially on nine carries for Peterson. Martin shotgun takes it, hands it off. Peterson left side. Got a got some room. 10, 5, and he'll be in, in there for a tag wire touchdown with 517 to play. Twelve yards out and the punch in for Peterson. 
his second of the night. Another Gearhart Broadband touchdown. Better broadband means better lives with Gearhart Broadband. We got a flag, touchdown. Personal foul. Against on. Pike Central. Yeah. That'll be applied to the kickoff after we get the two point conversion play. Kind of put Floyd Central in an interesting position. Are you going to onside it or take the chance to kick it for a onside touchback? Onside the kick. That's no question. <laughs> no question. All right. You, you have, the only chance you've got it with coming back winning this game is to not let Matt Anderson touch the football. That's true, too. And the only way you can do that is to have possession of the ball. That's true. Martin hands it off. They'll punch it That's in for good. two. That was Shelton with a two-point conversion. Uh, I thought it was Peterson again. It was Shelton. All right. 22-16 <laughs> with 5-17 to play on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Back in one minute on WMDJ Sports. This is Tony Corkert, Douglas Ray Hall, with my message to all student athletes in Floyd County. It's been said that others may have more talent than you, but remember, there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. Remember that every champion was once only a contender. Be confident, take risks, and know that failure and rejection are the first steps to success. Good luck to all Floyd County schools from your circuit court clerk, Douglas Ray Hall. Hi everybody, Dave Baker here for Total Pharmacy Care. And football, the object on Friday nights is to prove your team is better than their team. With well, Total Pharmacy Care, we prove that and prove that. Our team of pharmacists only fills prescriptions for cards and candy and monopoly items. Just complete focus on explaining and filling your prescriptions. So tell your doctor, choose between Total Pharmacy Care. They're located in the Texas, Melbourne, Piper, Prestonsburg, and Martin. It's not just a name, it's a pharmacy. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. So Floyd Central punches in the, t the touchdown, then the personal foul penalty puts the Jags ticket off at the Pike Central 45, and you got to be going for the onside here. Can Obviously. Li can lightning strike again? Can we get possession back quickly? Peterson lets it roll. Big hop, Good bounce. Big hop. It's, 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 it's alive. We got it. Floyd Central's got it. Max Martin corrals it. And now, just like that, Floyd Central in good spot here with 5.15 to play. 22-16 to score. Holy oh, Moses. Wow. Momentum shifting right here. Right Big before Mo coming back. Yes, sir. That was crazy just to watch it. As the Pike Central player just rolled over, there was the ball. Going to the wishbone. Ball at the 44 handoff. Cutting it, spinning to Shelton. He'll go down to the 25-yard line. Wow. Solid nine yards at least. And that'll call for second down, nine-yard pickup by Shelton. Went from the 34 to the 25. Mercy. That's only the third carry tonight for Shelton. Hand off. Shelton again up the middle. Met. Forward progress got him to the 25. I think he got the one yard he needed, but we'll wait. No gain. No gain? Man. Yep. Line of scrimmage was the 25. Oh. Yeah, no gain on the play. Almost quarterback sneak it. Just oh. Hang on to the football here. Shelton, four carries, 20 yards. Need one yard, handoff. There it is. Peterson, there's the push and got the first down across the 25. Looks so like you got two. That puts Peterson over the century mark. They'll roll the clock, 4-15. 22-16, your score, Pike Central on top on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Empty backfield, got trips out, bunched 
to the right. They want to overload that side. Hand off to Peterson. They'll set some blocks. He's got a hole. Gets it across the 15 and down. First down. Near the 10. That's a first down Jaguars. Down near the 10 yard line. Be close to a gain of 13. Twelve yards on the pickup by Peterson there. I was close. So ball at the 11. First and 10 at the 11 for Floyd Central. Down 22-16 with 3.32 and ticking to go in the fourth quarter. Hutchford.com scoreboard. And in motion. And they'll give it to him. It's Adams. Adams. Left side across the five and down just short of the goal line. We'll give the three or the four. Whoo. Keep pounding that rock. He's at the three. Second down and about about three. That's eight. That's a two. Yeah. That's an eight yard gain. Eight yard gain. Adams had that big 24 yard run just moments ago. Clock rolling down to under three to go in the game. Play's been sent in. We're under 10 seconds on the play clock. Under center is Martin. Got Peterson in the backfield. If Sheston Johnson think, plunges forward. I think Johnson got it. He might have enough for a first down. Yeah, you can get to the one for a first down. And indeed he did. First and goal at the one for Sheston Johnson. Just got the two, two yards. And a good call by... The coaching staff get that reset of downs and now four chances at the end zone. First and goal at the one. Your line's got to show up right now. How about a little bootleg for Martin running it out oh, here? Let's see. It is, the box is loaded right Martin here. Martin under center. Waiting for a long snap count. They'll turn, hand it to Sheston. They'll He's push in. him over. Touchdown, Jaguars. Touchdown, Jaguars. Yes, sir. Double check. That was Johnson on the touchdown. Sheston Johnson caught upon here to punch it in. It's now tied at 22 with 147 to go. And a big two-point conversion right now. Or wait. They're going to kick it. They're going to kick it. Going to go for the kick with Peterson for the extra point. Oh. Waiting for the snap. There it is. Whistles, whistles. I'd have kicked it just for practice. Offsides on Pike Central as they were trying to time the jump. Offside against the Hawks. Time the count. Does that change change you though? Does that change the call? They're going to go for that kick, and they will move up just a little bit, of course, for the penalty, but half the distance to the goal, they move up half a yard. Man, that's a yard. They, they're You're one yard still out. Kick it. I kind of I like the call. Brody Buck is the holder. Waiting for the snap. There it is. The hold. The kick is blocked. blocked. Is blocked. And we remain tied at 22 with 147 to go. And now you're going to kick the football away to Pike Central with time for Anderson. To fly. Don't forget, he has thrown. He's <laughs> thrown some passes, too. Eight. That's right. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that was tough. That was tough. <laughs> One forty-seven remaining. Listen, it's, it's not a Floyd Central game if it's not being interesting. It's got to be interesting <laughs> to the very end. Kick was blocked after the penalty by the Hawks, and now Peterson will see if he can send it deep here. Let's go, 
Gonna run man, run a man in here real quick. Peterson sends it away. Boomer takes a bounce, dead bounce, live ball. And just oh, wow. finally just picked up on almost recovered by Floyd Central, nearly. So now the Hawks take over right around the 26-yard line or so. We'll get the spot in a second with 145 remaining. What a game. <laughs> Typ typical Floyd Central game. Typical game. So Pike Central will take over with 145 to go at their own 26. They have three timeouts. I think they have at two. Well, the board had three, I think two as well, yeah. Let's go into Anderson. Left side goes string it out. No flags. Out of bounds. First down on the run. Twelve on or no eleven. Eleven yard pickup. Two hundred and thirty-four yards on eleven carries for Matt Anderson. Ball at the Pike Central thirty-seven yard line. First and ten. Clock at one thirty-nine. Scammo and Anderson look over to the sideline for the call from Coach Varney. There's the snap, handoff from Scamlin to Anderson, this time to the right, and tied up and down. Nice job, Landon Castle. Tied him up, and a little help from his friends and a timeout called by the Hawks. It's a loss of seven, almost. I'll give it a loss of seven. Wow. Josh might give it six. He says seven. And officially, he's got 225 on Josh's statistical screen. And now, though, this is kind of where Pike Central is one-dimensional uh, because you've got to go to the man, and everybody knows it. Well, and well, here's the other thing is you remember the end of the first half, he hit that big ball. He did. Yeah, he did. So, I mean, we, he's shown that he can you, throw it. You have to guard against that kind of thing because he's already shown he can do it. So, you're right. Here we now the timeout. It'll be second down and about 16. Got to get to the 40, just past the 47 for a first down. The, yep, 47 would probably give you a first down. Clock's at 128. They shift over. Anderson will take a direct snap. Does. And he's going to look to run. Left side, looking for somebody, gets hit. And down the left sideline into Floyd Central Territory. He's around the 50 or 49-yard line. First down. That was way too easy. Yeah. We had a lot of cushion on that. It was like a 21-yard gain there. Mercy. And if you're going to give those kind of runs up and – out of bounds to stop the clock to make it even worse. Uh-huh. Clock stopped at 119. And now they'll say he didn't We're get out of bounds. It. So they'll say wind it. And the clock begins to roll. We're tied at 22, approaching one minute to go in the game on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. Ball at the Floyd Central 49. Here come the Hawks. Hand off Anderson, Matt, and down. In the backfield, Chester Johnson in there. And then the finish by Dalton Martin, number 75. That's some good individual plays right there. And another timeout taken by the Hawks. I believe that's their last timeout. Should be. That's a five-yard loss right there. Unless they're going to respot it. And they are. Be a three yard loss. Hey, F Floyd Central right here doing what they got to do to get in this backfield right now and blow up any running play as they have to continue to get pressure in the backfield 
to not let Anderson get outside. Good job tackling him without getting out of bounds, making Pine Central burn their last timeout right here with 52 seconds. Everything's got to be towards the sideline right here if you're Pike Central. If you're Floyd Central, you want to keep them in bounds. It was a four-yard loss, not five. Second down and about uh, 13. Anderson again weaving his way through. He's at the 40. 35-30. Down. Clock. They can't stop the clock because it will stop to reset the chains. Big run by Anderson. They'll spot the ball at the 26. A 26-yard run. And hold the phone, whistles. False start. Well, it's, they stopped it, and then they didn't start it. They stopped it to set the ball, and then... They're telling Pike Central to hold up. Start. False start. So back at back five yards. So first and 15. Now wind the clock, and here we go. Ball back behind the 30. 31-yard line. There's the snap to Anderson. Left side. Got some running room. 25, 20, 15 down the sideline. Pay dirt. Pike Central with 27. They're not stopping the clock. They're not stopping the clock on the... It won't stop. He's over here trying, pushing the button. Floyd Central fans are going nuts here. He is, because he the is, clock wouldn't stop. He, they put it back to, to 28. So a touchdown for Anderson. Complete pandemonium here because the clock wouldn't stop. But they haven't got it stopped, reset at 28 seconds, and that would be correct. 28-22 on the touchdown run by Anderson. Now with 300 yards and four scores on the night. And they'll go for two right here. Snap, Scamble's got it. Nope, give it to Anderson, punches it in for two. 30 to 22 with 28 seconds left. And now with 28 seconds and a 31-22 lead for the Hawks, they'll look to kick it out of bounds or as deep as possible, not near Peterson. Probably a squib kick right up the middle. Yeah. Try to get Floyd Central to down it around the 30. That, that's just my guess right here. Floyd Central does have all three timeouts. So it would be nice if it's a squib kick. Of course, uh, Pike Central has recovered two onside kicks here in the second half. So your hands, guys, have got to be well aware of well, the situation here. I mean, I don't think you want to hit, hit a squib kick just because you're giving yardage up. I mean, it's shortening the field for Floyd Central if you do hit a squib kick, I mean, an onside kick, as Floyd Central would have it close to the 50 instead of a squib kick where you'd have it to go probably hopefully around the 30. Again, 28 seconds remaining in the game on the Hutchboard.com scoreboard. 30 to 22, Hawks on top. And they'll be kicking away here from their own 40 yard line. Play clock is running. Mandrell to kick the football away for the Hawks. And it's right in the middle of Squibber. And it takes a bounce, picked up inside the Peterson. 25, 30. Peterson's got it. And down inside the 35. So Floyd Central takes over with 19. Stop the clock, 23, 23 seconds. seconds. This Floyd Central crowd, and rightfully so, very upset that this clock can't stop. I think it's stopping and then going backwards. Possibly so. Uh, we've seen that before. Ball spotted at the 39-yard line. 23 seconds remaining. Floyd Central has all three timeouts. Shot 
Shotgun for Martin, trips out to the left, two men to the right. Look at the pass, Martin. Guns, he got a man down deep, and it is caught. Peterson, or Shelton is Peterson. Peterson inside the 20. Inside the 20 with 15 seconds to go. What about a 41-yard pass right there. Finally timed in. Wow. I think that was about 41 yards on that pass. My goodness. Timeout called by Floyd Central. A 42-yard pass completion from Martin to Peterson on first down. They've been running that streak route a couple of times, finally connecting here, and the Jags are in business inside the red zone. That was a that was a toss up between Shelton and Peterson just on a go who, round. and it looked like it really looked like Peterson just took it out of Shelton's hands. Nevertheless, it's setting things up for a first and ten right at the twenty, it looks like now, for Floyd Central with fifteen seconds and two timeouts remaining, down thirty to twenty two on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. You would have to obviously get six and, a two and the two to tie. You can't win it, but you can extend it. Well, that's all you all you can ask for right now. Here we go. I'm sorry, Stacey. I didn't know. Come on, Stacey. Ball at the 20-yard line. Martin from shotgun back to pass. Got a man again. And tucks it and runs it instead. Goes down the sideline and out of bounds. That's a late hit again. And it is. There's a flag. Another late hit. You are right. Clock's at eight seconds. So Martin just did not feel comfortable about letting it go. Straight down the left sideline. And again, a late hit. And we'll get the call and the spot. Looks like it's going to be about a 10-yard run. And then the personal foul penalty assessed. Tack on half the distance to the goal, so it should be about five, at the five it's yard line. It's at the line. five. First and goal at the five with eight seconds to go and two timeouts in your pocket. Floyd Central 0-5 trying to force overtime with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And five and eight seconds to do it. Martin under center. Handoff. It'll be Shelton. He'll be. He'll be. He's in. in there for a touchdown. With two seconds on the clock. And now the oh so important two point conversion. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Gearhart Broadband touchdown. Better broadband means better lives. Gearhart Broadband. And now, timeout will be taken, <laughs> wisely so, to set up what will be the biggest two point conversion of the season right now. Give Josh some credit on the timeout call over there. Well. Nevertheless, it's been, I mean, pick yourself back up off the ground. I could You could have easily seen oh, them man. say, we're phoning it in after that. You know, Anderson going downfield yeah. and everything else. And you marched uh, on this drive, you've marched 61 yards in three plays in 26 seconds. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Man, that's why you love the game of football. But it's been agony. I mean, it's been <laughs> agony. This season, but now, and it, it might not be over with here. <laughs> a two-point conversion, and it definitely will keep going. But the agony may continue if they can't punch this in. Right here, you got to run your best play right yeah. here. All the way, this is your best play. Put it in your hands of your best, best athletes. Here we go. Martin and the team runs out for Floyd Central, needing the two-point conversion to tie. He'll turn, he'll give. He's met. And he will not be in. Not going to get in. Stopped. 
and that'll be it. And Pike Central is going to hang on for a 30-28 win here tonight on their homecoming night. My, oh, my. And the agony continues for Floyd Central football. A gritty, gritty effort, though, tonight. You can't fault the effort after giving up two terrible miscues on special teams in the third quarter. I was saying phone it in, start the bus, and go home. They kept fighting. They kept scratching. Comes down to a two-point conversion that just does not come in. Yeah, very unfortunate right here. You'd have to hope for a miracle right here. Yeah. An onside recovery picked up and ran back. You'd have to hope for a miracle. There's the squib. Downed. Done. Pike Central 30. Floyd Central 28 on the Hutchford.com scoreboard. That's your final. We'll come back and name our Community Trust Bank Player of the Game in three minutes on WMDJ Sports. comes to keeping your home cool this summer, don't sweat it. Right now, Elliott Heating and Cooling is offering six months, zero interest, with no monthly payment, same as cash. Offer good now through the end of summer. One call and your worries are gone. 437-7368. A name you can always count on. Patriot RV of Prestonsburg is your RV headquarters and more. In fact, we are authorized dealer for Club Car Golf Carts, Club Car is America's premier line of golf carts, and you'll find a huge selection in all styles and colors. There's 0% financing available for 48 months for qualified buyers. Patriot RV, you at 23 in Prestonsburg. Hello, this is Earl Justice of Hutchford and Paintsville and West Liberty. We here at Hutchford are committed to the area students, athletes, and their growth and dedication to teamwork and excellence on and off the field. It is our hope that each team will have an excellent season and make memories that last a lifetime. Every team knows to win the big game, you have to want it more than the other team. At Hutchford, our team wants to sell you your next vehicle more than anyone else, and we can prove it. Shop us online at Hutchford and Paintsville and West Liberty. Blue Mountain Wireless is the region's premier wireless provider. And now we're hiring. Our team offers an excellent benefit package with competitive wages and a great work environment. Apply today to join the home team and a company that's been in business for 30 years and is dedicated to Eastern Kentucky to apply. Or for more information on job opening, visit AppalachianWireless.com and click the careers link at the bottom of the page. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Appalachian Wireless is an equal opportunity employee. Hi, Kenny Rice here for A-Plus Roofing and Exteriors. Are you needing to improve your home or business exterior? Let the pros at A-Plus Roofing and Exteriors help. They specialize in roof replacement and will work with your insurance when it comes to wind or hail damage. A-Plus Roofing can also replace or repair gutters and siding. They have over a decade of experience to handle your job correctly and efficiently. Contact Travis Francis for a free estimate at 606-791-4226 or visit A-Plus Roofing KY.com. That's A plus roofing and exteriors of Hazard and Lexington. Hello, this is Brandon Spencer, Republican candidate for state representative of the 95th District of Floyd and Pike County. Can you imagine one football player trying to win a game by themselves? They would never get anything done. You must have a team working together. That's why I'm asking for your vote on November the 8th. I can work with Senator Rand Paul and Congressman Hal Rogers in the Republican-controlled House and Senate. With your vote, you'll have a team working for Floyd and Pike County, paid for by Brandon Spencer. Live and local, there's only one WMDJ. Back at Pike Central tonight where the Hawks have held on to win 30-28 to on the Hutchford.com scoreboard, stopping Floyd Central on a two-point conversion attempt to tie the game with two seconds remaining, and the Hawks beat the Jags for the sixth consecutive season, 30-28. to 
I don't know how many more ways they can lose a game. It was heartbreaking tonight. Agony. I mean, could have quit. Could have quit. At the end of that third quarter, could have quit. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of agony and hurt in this, but there is the positive is, you know, these guys didn't stop. They kept fighting. They did keep fighting. They fought hard all the way to the bitter end. Uh, obviously gave themselves a chance to win. And, I, you know, that's what you ask for. When, you, when you're coaching and you're talking to your kids, you know, all you ask for is, like, give yourselves the best chance to win. Uh, obviously a couple miscues put uh, Floyd Central behind the eight ball. And, like you said, they fought. They come back. Had a chance, uh, had a chance to win, then had a chance to extend it into overtime to continue giving themselves a chance, and that I mean, you know that's that's what you're going to take from this game as a positive. All that, in spite of giving up 405 yards of total offense, you still had a chance to tie the game and send it to overtime after giving up that kind of yardage, and still had a chance at it. Looking at the Uh, Final stance here tonight, 405 total yards of offense on 57 plays for Pike Central. Floyd Central with 285 yards of total offense and 45 plays here tonight. Rushing tonight, 352 yards by Pike Central on 51 of those 57 plays. Floyd Central with 233 yards on 36 carries tonight. Passing yards dead even. 40, 53 for Pike Central, 52 uh, for Floyd Central. Penalties hurt uh, Pike Central tonight. Ten penalties for 70 yards, including, you know, the late hits here down the stretch yeah. that put Floyd Central keeping them going downfield in a positive way. Jags only had three penalties for 20 yards. 27 minutes of possession time tonight, nearly 28 uh, for the Hawks. Floyd Central with 20 minutes of possession time, so not much difference there. Just the yardage tonight. Uh, you break down some individual numbers. We'll go over all Floyd Central's numbers. Uh, Peterson, 12 carries, 111 net yards, and two touchdowns tonight for the Jaguars in the, out of the backfield. Max Martin, 10 carries for 43 yards. Blake Adams, four carries for 40 yards. And Coach Shelton, five carries for 25 yards in the score. And, of course, uh, Sheston Johnson uh, with uh, 14 carries as well for four yards tonight for Floyd Central. Passing tonight. Uh, a couple catches for Peterson, 42 yards. Had an all-around great game. Uh, six yards complete to uh, Jace Martin. Brody Buck caught one pass for four yards tonight. And then the big number on the other side for Pike Central, our Community Trust Bank player of the game will go to Matt Anderson, who had enjoyed – how many? Josh, how many yards was it again? That he had tonight? Well, I'm talking about overall against Floyd Central. Oh, uh, he averaged about a 180, 185 the last three seasons. The last three seasons. I, I, I deleted the note, but it was about 180 per, per game the last three years. Tonight he caps it off <laughs> in his final matchup against the Jaguars with 300 net yards rushing on 37 carries and four touchdowns tonight. I mean, they, plus, there, plus there the, should be an APB. There, he should have an EPO against him. He can't get around anybody from Floyd Central the well, rest of his life. I mean, that's, I mean, that's insane. 300 yards well, of net rushing by not, that young not man tonight. Not to mention tonight. the 50-some passing yards probably came from him as well. Yeah. Uh, he, again, had an overall great night. Three of four passing, 53 yards. Punched in four on the ground using his legs. 300 yards net on 37 carries. 56-yard long run tonight. Uh, his long play for Matt Anderson. He is our Community Trust Bank player of the game. That's Community Trust Bank, building communities built on trust. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. An outstanding game from him. A great effort both ways tonight. Well, and a thrilling game. But, again, it just another agonizing defeat for Floyd Central. Basically let one man beat you. Yeah. I mean, 400 and some net yards total and th- over 350 from him individually. That's tough to take. And again, the final tonight on the HutchFord.com scoreboard. Floyd Central losing tonight here at the Pike Central, going to 0-6 on the season as the Hawks get their second win of the year, 30-28. to Down the road, Betsy Lane, no trouble tonight with Phelps, a 61-14 win for them. And we understand late in the game for uh, Preston's Bird, they're down by one with under three to go mm. at East Ridge and a thrilling finish up there tonight. 
for Matt Johnson on the cameras, for Josh McKinney on the statistics and keeping things going on the social media side, for Byron Hall on color commentary, I'm Jamie Johnson. It's been a tough one tonight, tough loss for Floyd Central. The final again, 30-28 Hawks with a win here tonight. Good night from Buckley Street.